the sharp tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. And today I got one of my personal friends in here, man. I love this girl a lot. I love what she puts out to the world. I love her content, man. We got Don't Call Me White Girl in the building today. Man. Woo, give it up. You did. Give, give it, it to up for, up for the Don't Call Me White Girl from <laughs> Philadelphia, baby. I'm excited to be here. It's a long time coming, Sharp. It is. I'm, I'm glad that I actually got to get you down here because I know our schedules be crazy. I know you be ripping and running He's up hella east. busy. That's really what it is. But I know you be up there ripping and running up east a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you be gone. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I'm telling you, I need to get you down here to come mess with me. No, for real. I need to live here. So we can do something. Seriously. I need to be <clears throat> West Coast Mona, LA Mona. And I need me a little out here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody keep me warm at night. You got a little, yeah, got a little condo or something. Yeah, clean. Little something clean. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Quiet. Man. No Quiet Instagram, little neighborhood, no kids. No social media. I could deal with the kids. How many? How many? Up to how many? Max. I would like three max. you a real the one. Kids, how many baby moms can I take is the question. <laughs> I could take baby mothers, oh. maybe two. <laughs> if you got them bitches in line, because sharp, that's the thing. Yeah. And I told you that before, when you a certain kind of man, things fall in line. No matter how dumb the bitch is, when you're a certain kind of man, things fall in line, but these niggas don't have their... Eyes dot and their T's crossed, so everything right. be crazy. You meet a nigga, you done gained the enemy, you gained three enemies from one nigga. The best way to deal with your baby mamas is to not give up and just concentrate on the kids. Because I'm gonna tell you this a bitch that ain't with you gonna put you through everything. Mm -hmm. Hell, look what she put you through when you're with her. Imagine what she gonna put you through when you're not. Listen. So you just, I feel like, honestly, like just letting that shit, hey, turn the cheek on a lot of that shit. Not everything, it doesn't, not everything she's gonna do deserves attention. Listen. Let that shit ride. I had to learn. I learned that the hard way. Like, because all you do is sit there and beat yourself up. I'm just speaking for the men. That's you know some what I'm real saying? shit. For real. Listen, it's the turn the cheek thing when I left, we had a daughter, we ain't had no car, but I moved to the suburbs probably 40 minutes, 45 minutes away. I gave her my own little hoopty. You know why? People looked at me like I was crazy for that, but I'm going to do everything I can to keep y'all united. It's never going to be something on my side where you can yeah. say, well, your mama moved you away. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got this hoopty I'm not using, and you go ahead and take that, you know, so you could get back and forth to see your daughter. That's a lot live. Of, a lot That's of shit happened in between, because people always ask, her, how do you co-parent? Co for the most part, I'm the one being a bigger person, because I really don't want to beef with this I don't, I don't want them no more, but we got to raise this human. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Bitches really get in the mix because the emotion, they be tied to it. They really want the shit for real. Because if you really, where's my camera? If you this really don't here, want that here. man, it's no way in the world y'all should be beefing if you really don't want him. Now, if you find yourself picking who touched their hair, who changed their clothes, why you take care of their you might have to reevaluate how you feel about that nigga. You might really want that nigga back. Because if you really don't want him, petty about who he date, where the baby go, he not gonna bring no harm to his child. You should just care that, and to hate the next chick, you should just care that she's actually being good to your kid. What? Not doing their hair, why would you be mad at that? What? Are you mad because they might have did it a little bit better than you would? What? Like what's the real problem? Maybe. How deep does that really fall? You know, when I think about that. Let me talk to you though, I wanna know man about your upbringing, I wanna know you. Yeah, I know they. I, you you spoke on it before, but I feel like I can get a little bit more about your ass. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> I really do. <clears throat> I do. I feel like I'm gonna get it. I want to know about you. Like I want to know your upbringing. I want to know how you how you grew up. What made don't call me white girl? Where'd that come from? Where the I'm from, talk to some of my viewers. I'm from North Philly originally, and um, my mother is lighter than me. Freckles, green eyes, hair in her back, but we black, right? She Creole. She, what it really is, is, and I never get into it because it's such a bummer, but her her father, her real father, who didn't raise her, um, his mother worked in Georgia and her boss would rape her sometime. And one time she ended up pregnant with this red hair. You know how everybody black got that freckle face, high yellow cousin with the red hair or the blondish hair? That's what my mother's father ended up being. And it was bad because... His mom was already pissed she had to leave Georgia with this white, because you can't walk around Georgia with no white baby and it came out of you. People want to know what's up, whose baby that is, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So she had to move to Philly, which she hated. She hated her son, which was my grandfather. Hated him his whole life. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it, he represented everything wrong in her life. You know what I mean? You the reason why I'm not in Georgia. You the reason why I don't have a husband. I got this kid with no man. It's just a terrible story. That's why I never really break it down, like where the, the light complexion comes from, but... 
Um, that guy grew up to be a kind of lightweight gangster, and he had a side bitch who was like 15. He had like two, three kids, two kids with her, and that's my grandmother. That's how we came. So I'm the product of a side bitch relationship. Like my, mm. I've met cousins, and it's like their grandma was the wife, so they know each other and all that. We the side bitch family, so we hit. Right. You know what I mean? So um. Just all so your that family was a hidden family. Yeah, we were we were a secret. Like we, you know, even at his funeral, he, they didn't acknowledge us or talk about us. So you do have white in you. you are. I do this. technically have white. I mean, my grandfather is half white. If you really break it down, that's really. I feel like I just dropped a bomb. Don't call me white girl's grandfather is half white. I don't consider myself. <laughs> I don't consider myself mixed. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this is this where the name really come from, Sharp. Not the fast forward, but you know we're gonna get into it anyway. Yeah, come on. I come from a time, because me and you ain't foreign age. I come from a time where bitches are so obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. Like you go to bitches' houses, they 34, 25. It's a big ass picture of Marilyn Monroe with a Marilyn Monroe rug and all. I and they never, don't even know why they like her. That's the thing. And it's like when you get into it, Marilyn Monroe was a husband fing pill popping yeah. and with the mob ratchet ass. Telling secrets. Telling you know what telling I mean? all types of secrets and government because she her land, mouth. Yeah, she land with presidents and shit like that. That's running just her true. mouth, you know, not even holding it down, necessarily keeping it a hundred. She was running her mouth. Some say that's how she died, but we ain't gonna get in all that. But <laughs> it used to bother me. It was like you go on social media, the girl had a blackest name in America, Shaquita, but her last name would be Kardashian, Shaquita Kardashian. It's like everybody was chasing these images of like white girls. And I couldn't understand it. It's like, unless you're blind, deaf, or fucking a tard, you don't <laughs> notice that black people run the culture. We set the tone for every mother Fact. thing. The number one plastic surgery in this country for the last 10 years has been Hips and ass. Who comes out with hips and ass? Black people. Mm -hmm. We set the tone for plastic surgery, fashion, clothes, everything. We set the tone for everything. Look what happened to Dapper Dan and Gucci. You know what I'm saying? Look what happened to Dapper Dan in 89, 1991, whenever they shut him down. So it's like, for me, don't call me no white girl, baby, because I'm black and I'm super stoked to be black. Like, I actually feel lucky to be a black woman and you're not going to project that on me, that whole, oh, you mix what you got in your family. I like your hair. You know what I mean? I'm black. My hair naps up when it's wet. You know, my is fat. My lips are big. And I'm happy to be black. Don't call me no white girl. It's not even hate for the white girls. It's just don't call me no white girl. Not to mention they look horrible in the press lately. Karens? Who the fuck wants to be a Karen or affiliated with a Karen? Yeah. I mean, no, and it's listen to the viewers. Um, first of all, thanks for welcoming me in the Sharp Tank. I'm glad to be here. And yeah, I know some of you curly heads that are mixed are gonna be offended. It's nothing against you, but it's like I know me, and you ain't pushing that mix on me because I'm not the mix. That's just not what it is. Motherfuckers will argue me down. You just think you black because you got black kids. You just think you black because you listen to right. Like people don't even believe it when I say I'm black. They don't, they think that I'm like like a whoa Vicky vibe. You know what I mean? Well, Catch me outside. How about that? I like think that vibe. it is, Mama. I'm gonna tell you this, and it's a gift. I'll tell you what your gift is: tell me. a true trick of light. And mm. what that is is, <clears throat> you can be anything you want to be. Mm -hmm. You can change your hairstyle and probably not look like the same chick yesterday. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Like some chicks, like you notice how, like no matter what they do, they still got this core look to them. Like that, a Wednesday. That you could just, yeah, you just recognize no matter what the fuck. You you could put a fucking uh, uh fucking wig on a pig like it still looked the same. Right. You know what I mean? That type of ordeal. Right. But you you could change your hair like this and look like a lawyer from Wall Street. You, you could change me? your hair like this and look like a cowgirl from Texas. You Go to the court your with a briefcase with nothing in it. You change your exact man. Stop playing talk with me. your shit. Go to the court with a bun and a briefcase with nothing in it. Your yeah. honor, that is not true. That was not me. It don't work. But I still went in there with the. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I still went in there with some, and I'm telling yo, first start doing my podcast, one of the first episodes, I know y'all remember, it was like episode three, I say, because it went viral, I say, gel ain't that bad shit, and you know, they give you free food, you ain't got no fucking bills, they eat Now, it went viral, but the point was, you can survive anything. Sharp, you know how many square bills? in my DM and they got themselves in trouble fighting gun cases then you know you get you know you get license to carry but you black so you got to follow every rule to the T if you don't they give you gun possession a bitch just wrote me emailed me and was like yo I want you to know you the only reason why I smiled through this court case and you the reason why I fought them charges and I beat my case like I'll be thinking I'm just talking my shit but these motherfuckers writing it down so when I say like gelling it's because if you might have to do Six months of jail, a year in jail for not running your fucking mouth, and you've been a part of some 
that you know you was bringing in money in, but you not running your mouth for save 10 motherfuckers not going from jail, let me let you know it ain't that bad and you'll survive and stand up, stand tall on that. Because we had an alarming rate with the telling. It's like, it's just blatantly over. You could tell drop an album in his hot. And that's I, just I'm that. I'm be honest with you. I get uh You could do it two weeks ago if you wanted to. Dropped it on a Friday. Hey, you know, I just I get tired of people, you know, with the to like, you know, even with like, you know, time, doing time, like you gotta understand, like you said, if you you did some shit and you get caught, man, a year man, go sit your ass down. If you ain't gonna you ain't gotta tell no, I don't give what it is. I don't give you get twenty five years. That's what you, that's you, you pay, you playing. Pay the piper, baby. If you gonna play, man, you gonna have to pay sometimes. And sometimes, hey, man, it might be, you might feel like it's out of your realm, but that don't give you time, all, all is over, let me go tell. Yeah. I ain't with I wanna know your shit. opinion. This is what I've been thinking, and I've been rolling with this for about a year. If you have been in the street since you jumped off the porch, and let's say you jumped off the porch, average is about high school, junior high, right? If you 30 and you have never been to jail, like, Spent the night, caught a real case, right? You got the head told. It's no way. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the nigga that get a job because he fuckers flip up all the time. I'm not talking about the nigga that in and out. I'm talking about the nigga that lives and breathes and survives all street money. Take care of his kids, his bitch, all street money. If you make it to 30 after being out here 15, 15 plus, you told. You might wear a wire right now. Ain't no motherfucking way. It's impossible. I mean, looking good, fellas. Look at Ray Liotta, even though he played a, you know, say he played a part Henry on there. Mm -hmm. He told. Of course he did. At the very end, he told on all of them. Of course he did. Look at American Gangster. Frank Lucas told on everybody. Frank told twice. He told on everybody. Uh -huh. Like if you look at like this, the movies are dope, but <clears throat> they get watched. It's fucked up because they'll get watched, and them, the the main parts, the main fucking body of the movie gets overlooked. Mm -hmm. That they he was a fucking snitch. He's a rat. White boy Rick, a fucking a snitch. A fucking rat. All of them. A fucking. But these rat. people have been glorified as you know some top dogs in the old, especially good old USA. Frank. Especially Frank. People act like they don't forget. And the thing about Frank, the thing and Frank is a they great can story. Drop a, they can drop a fucking backlog to that one and do a fucking American Gangster two. They can with him, and it'll still sell. And tell the real and everybody <laughs> know he's a snitch already, and it's still yeah. gonna get watched. But listen, Frank's story is good because I believe this too. And you tell me if I'm wrong. Every nigga that read it in my early twenties, like especially on them big indictments and shit. It seemed like by the time everybody home for their diamonds, everybody did their 10 years and all that, that one rat always ends up getting sat down at the end. So he 40 plus, get locked up a little powder on him, they hit him hard for it. You feel me? Yeah. He 40 plus, get his second little domestic violence, they send him up the road for seven, eight years. Once them police done using you, they get your motherfucking ass. Unless you tell and really never commit another crime, you're going to fuck the jail. You just holding what, it off. The people life, use you up and let's fuck you like, like a this. boogie. How is that a life worth fucking living? That's a life not even worth to, to know that I gotta live in a WITSEC program for the rest <laughs> of whatever and fucking with that work protection. Work yeah, and work at somebody warehouse, nigga, fucking selling used tires or fucking making tires or some fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? That it's not a life worth a damn, Tommy. Not from a that boy. shit ain't nothing, man. Like if you, I always say this, right? Let's keep it real, Mona. If, if a motherfucker, if you got to even worry about whether you would tell or not, mm -hmm. maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Boy. That way, you ain't got to worry about telling. Uh -huh. See, but everybody always see the bread and they want the money. Like, yeah. oh, well, I want to live like that. Yeah. You don't know what came with even half a nigga jewels or cars or clothes. You don't know what came with, you don't know this nigga probably just got shot at last night the, eight times. The fucking paranoia alone. You start getting money for real, you can't even fucking sleep. I used to ride, when I was really outside, outside, I would ride around with my gun right on my leg. I would sleep with that bitch on my chest sometime under my pillow. I was so, I lived in a small town. I was one of the only girls getting money out there. You know, it's like an out of town thing. Everybody go out the county to get the money. That's how I got indicted. Yeah. And I'm the only one out there. And I had to, like, be my security and my accountant and my marketing, you know. Yeah. I would be tired at the end of the night. But I was low-key scared to death. So to wear that armor, because I'm a woman in a man's game, no matter what. You know, as females, a lot of trappers be out here. You know, we not we, cause that's but that's back in the day. I haven't broke a law in over fifteen years, <laughs> way past the statute of limitations. But way back, way way back, when I was out here and the other females that be out here, it's like 
we fight in a losing game almost because certain men just never respect you. Every business deal, everything you do, they still, she a bitch though, you know, she a, and it's so crazy because I feel like we're expected to kind of tell and shit. And I know so many more men that told than women. I know a That's lot of women that just- That's why they always try to bring the chick in first. Yeah. They, they go straight for her like, hey, come on, let's go, because he- she, they're going to feel like she don't really know her rights, but that's why your nigga can't be game goofy, allegedly, and let her know what the play is. <clears throat> I'm going to be real, like having money, back to I want to level with you on that, having money. Like I remember being young, having bread, I would never wear my jewelry home. I'd wait till i get up the block to put it on. Mm. <clears throat> I never put my, like when I was coming back, because I knew I stayed in a fucked up place, and nigga, I'm getting racks. Right. So I'm like, nigga, I would never wear my jewelry home. <clears throat> and I would never wear it out the house. And I would never take the same route home. I never take the same route home. Yeah. I don't know, Mongo, like my people taught me that. You know I was taught like, to circle the block three times. So it would end my up. My people turning taught me sick. don't even shop in your neighborhood. What as far as like groceries? Groceries, shopping? gas stations, nothing. Yeah. For real. That's real game, homie. Yeah. Like it's some extra work. People don't think about it, but if you're really playing that way. That's the way you really supposed to be moving. Yo, you have a neighbor. I stay in my rear view, nigga. Yeah. I never, and you know what's so cold? I never drive with my windows down and my music up. Ever. Why? Man, get robbed like that. Yeah. Bring attention to attention, yourself. Yeah. Hanging diamonds and shit out the windows uh -huh. and fucking sitting there flat. Like, I don't do that. Yeah. That's how you get robbed. Yeah. Yeah. So I got robbed like that, nigga, probably about mm, 16, 17 years ago. Whatever. Thought it was cool. Me and my partner, we were sliding up and down the strip. He had just popped him. He had just popped a new Beamer. Mm -hmm. Man, I had a bunch of jewelry on, homie. These niggas followed us off the strip. Mm. We pull up to go grab something to eat. They follow us off the strip. Niggas get out the car, put the banger in my face. Like, Damn. yeah, give it up. Yeah. I mean, what am I going to do? Shit, nigga, here, fuck it. Ain't nobody it. shot, though, right? Mm -mm. So that worked out. No, it worked out, but that's why I don't, I don't ride with the, uh, I don't ride with windows down. Yeah. And music blasting. It's either my my windows is up, music is up, or if I got the window cracked, I don't never ride like that. I don't like nobody knowing. I don't know. I just when you come from certain things, like you said, especially having a certain money, even if it's five thousand dollars, ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, if you're living in a low income area, mm -hmm. I've even said it before. That's hell, a lottery. The, 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 yeah, that's a lot of motherfucking money to some people. Not to mention, I've said it before, man. The the average. You know, I talked to uh, Rory Douglas. He even said it. And I was like, damn, I did the research and I saw it, that the average American household can't handle a $400 emergency. Mm. Why the fuck you ain't going to want to lick me, nigga? He see me with five, ten bands on me. Uh-huh. Niggas living check for check. And this Come the on, thing. kill you for that, You nigga. have a neighbor that has nothing to do, that does nothing all day long. That fucking neighbor is paying attention that you come home around 3 a.m. every morning, that you leave out 5 p.m. every morning. I mean, not for nothing, you get the cat burglar nigga that'll climb in your motherfucking window to take whatever he can take. No, but my mama. For besides real, for the real. cat burglar, you got another nigga that, because my father, that's what was his lane. You know what I mean? My dad did 10 years when I was like 4 to 14, and that's what he did. I remember him getting out and driving me down the block where I robbed every store on this strip. That was his thing. You know what I mean? And um, we're coming from a take money background, like, they will lay on you. Like, I know niggas that will get a little RV, park that bitch, and sleep there for a week to really pay attention to your measures, and real, I know this sounds fucked up to most people, but... A real nigga take money nigga, he doesn't say give me your shit. He opens it up with smacking you with the pistol so you know I'm not fucking playing with y'all. Walk in the house, shoot the first nigga in the leg. Hey, everybody get the fuck down because now people paying attention. We know you're not playing. Some niggas, they leave with the stuff and everybody did. That's the whole, because nope, dead people can't say what they drove or what they came in. You know, So I'm, that's how I think. I'm not knocking. Uh, listen, I'm not condoning better wording. I'm not condoning robberies, like are people that are robbers. I don't like thieves, people that steal. Oh, what shit. happened to really? No, I'm saying, but but if you go no, because I look at it like this: anything you Yikes. do, no, I'm, I have to say that. I know, I know. I used to steal. There's children that watch. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I'm not condoning that. That shit ain't cool. Mm. It ain't a wise thing to do. You shouldn't have to do it because there's people doing it that don't even got to rob. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? And putting themselves in fucked up ways. I can understand nigga, you down, your stomach touching your back, and you have you've tried every other motherfucking resource and every other option you can possibly try. Your baby needs some pampers, nigga. Your baby needs some milk. Yeah. Or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. need some food. Yeah. If you're gonna rob, I would think, like, I guess it's the instant gratification thing. People hear somebody got something, they just go try to see if what it is, don't mm -hmm. even know what it is. Right. 
Well, I'm trying to hit for some millions. Yeah. Like, because you know what that takes? Time and plotting. And brains. You got to really sit back yeah. and take your time on that. Yeah. You might not hit that for three, four months. Right. Take you a minute to learn. Because it take you six months to learn the whole layout. Yeah. It take you time to learn all this shit about what's really going on yeah. to execute this yeah. shit properly, yeah. allegedly. Because I want the fucking money. I never been, I never understood that. You hit the nigga the wrong day, he didn't spend everything, all he got is product. Now you got something you got to move around and you moving around might make him find you. Because the nigga that finds you ain't going to be nice about it. You know what I mean? It's not like the nigga that finds you, give me my shit back, bro. No, the nigga that finds you is probably going to blow your fucking head off. So the whole point is... You know, to get away with Just it, said, but... You're going to hit something. Hit something. Hit something. Hit something. Hit something. Don't really? fucking be... There's so many people that have gone to jail for the rest of their life because they robbed a motherfucker, robbed this lady for a Rolex and come to find out it was a fake one. Mm -hmm. But he's still about to get the same charge. You hear Wallow's story. You sat down with Wallow, right? You know what right? I'm saying? He about to still get the same charge, though, but he didn't took this fucking Rolex off this lady that it wasn't even real. Wasn't it was a Folex. It wasn't even real. It was a Folex. Yeah. And he took it... Cause he thinking that he just he sees it, so it's it's there, and you don't even know. Do your research. You man. know Wallow's story, some. right? You sat down with Wallow, right? Yeah. Wallow did that dub for robbery. He didn't get shit. It wasn't, you know what I mean? And then it's like another thing for them kids. It turned backwards. You can't when you black. You can't even be the nigga that give your homie the ride to rob the nigga. If he going seven and rob the nigga and shoot one of the convenience store owners, you just robbed him and shot. Him. You ain't have to do nothing but get in the car and say, bro, don't do it. You still getting the same. Charge, you know, I, I, I think I know. I just don't, I don't understand for licking for pettiness. I don't, I just don't understand, man. Yeah. Like, if you gonna lick, nigga, do some life changing shit, yeah. some shit that's about to really change your life. Yeah. Not just keep you cool and getting you some crab legs, nigga, and some fresh shoes, a nice t shirt, and a rental for a few weeks. These niggas so jealous, they go into a nigga house, get all his clothes, get yeah. his sneaks because they want to be the nigga, want to wear his yeah. skin. Yeah. They put it on. That's, hey, but they'll never, but you know what's so cold? I feel like the 80, 70% 70, 70 of the time, people that get licked from the street that are street people get licked by people that know them. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I'm saying? So let's say somebody stole your clothes. Mm -hmm. That bitch will never wear them shits around you, nigga. You're yeah. going to have to catch her on an oddball day. Mm -hmm. Catch her at Walmart or something or at Target. Mm -hmm. And the bitch got your shirt on. Yeah. And you know damn well she ain't had one of them. They can't even afford that shirt. Can't even afford the motherfucking shirt. Mm -hmm. But man, I, I can't stand people like that. It'll rob you and help you look for it. You said you said you ain't like these. I said yikes because for years I was a booster. I boosted for years, but they're That's not different. these. I used to buy shit from y'all. Yeah, that I was you, but my nigga. number one you customer. Call me and be like, man. I'll be like, I call you. I start sending you pictures. Yeah. You're like, I'm going to the forums right now, nigga. Look, I might call you next week. I'm about to hit the forums. I already know you wear like that. a 32. Man, foe, you was close. Nigga, I know my shit. You I know was my close, shit. Yeah. I know my <laughs> shit. Medium large top. I know my shit. You, you got I it. I gotta read the it button. from down the street. See the kids pick and tell you all the kids. Because sizes. you know what? I know it's years. fucked up, but I'd rather spend money with her than the people in A the store. Corporation, stars. fuck them. I don't know. I I'm just like that. Maybe it's because I was raised like that. Yeah. I was buying shit out of Rico truck coming yeah. up. So I know. Shout out to Rico. Yeah, shout out to him wherever he was, man, because he kept a nigga laced. I bet. You know what's crazy For to me? At least 10 years straight. You know what's crazy to me? All the shit that's going viral where it went viral out here out Cali. Niggas stealing out the Dollar General. This bitch jumps in her car, chases I up, knocks that. the nigga off his bike, and then proceeds to get out the car, pick this shit up while she cussing him out. Bitch ass nigga, why you coming to my store? Guess what happened to her? She got fired the next week. I never seen so many crash dummies in my life. First of all, all you bitches that work in the store, grocery store, supermarket, all that. They don't give a fuck about you. If I come in there stealing and you run up on me and I happen to have a taser and tase the fuck out of you to get you off my motherfucking Kia so I can get these TVs out okay. this parking lot. I'm with you, right? But I think, and like at first, I'm like, damn, it's fucked up that they fired her. But I understand why they fired yeah, her. Yeah, you're and a I'm liability, give, bitch. You, you hit the man off the bike. First and foremost, even though he's going to get a charge, he can turn around and sue y'all for trying to hurt him That's in the fact. process. That's a fact. Because they're going to look at it like nothing's worth hurting a person. Listen, over. not even that sharp. Especially no. hitting them with your car. They are not. There is no retail store, right? 
where the employees are allowed to stop Facts. you and break. They just do it because they hype. They hire security. Even security has to follow certain rules. I know, I can name y'all five boosters I know personally that got 50 grand out these stores. They might have quarter case, but who gives a fuck? Once you sue and they look at them cameras, they're not allowed to do half the shit they do. They just jump off a bridge for them. Y'all will work for these companies and get underpaid for five years and still go all the way out your way for a corporation that don't give a fuck about you. They're not coming to your funeral when a booster kill you. Damn, they're not bro. sending flowers. They're not paying for nothing. They don't give a fuck. Your black ass is there to fucking, can I help you? Do you want fries? Do you need salt? Do you need extra bag? That's why you there. And soon, it won't even be that because they got robots doing everything. Let me ask you, man. I'll be doing half my fucking job. Well, you bitches you. is crazy. Man, have you ever worked a regular job? Yeah, I have. I worked there. I mean, um, I know you work now. You got a podcast. You right. got but many like a nine to five. Going, but an actual like nine to five, you got to put them people's uniform on yes. and show up. On parole, yes. I, I like you well, know. That you was gotta, mandatory. Yeah. yeah, that was mandatory. Your ass is going but back. I, it's, it's been a couple times though where I've tried to be was like you normal. In the halfway house? I have that job at the halfway house, yeah. You was in the halfway house? Yeah, I was in the halfway house. I worked at the gas station when I was in the halfway house. And they house, stay, no, because no, I know that's how they be. And they'll call and check on her. Yeah. She can lie in that call. Oh, they used to come. <clears throat> and what's so cold is you can't even have your money. They keep your money for you. Like, they, yeah. like they, you give them the checks and they'll give you like a certain allowance out of it. They'll give you the majority of it back when you leave. Like, they stack your money up yeah. for you. Yeah, but they also now you got to pay to be in the happy house. You got to pay to be in jail. So they're yeah. going to take out the fees. Well, it's too. room and board now, right? Right. They're going to charge you for that food. My, my folks got locked up recently. I sent them 200 to get straight. They like, oh, well, they ate that up. It was buck fifty just to stay. So they only had fifty left. I just sent them more to get the basics, you know, socks, drawers, all that. It costs money to stay now. Yeah, jail different. All that shit. That's different. what I tell motherfuckers like it's a blessing. Don't be, for me. don't be mad when you're not making no like you feel like you ain't making the money that you want to make. Because let me tell you something. There's people that's been in jail <clears throat> for years, man, and make four or five cents. No count, no count. Twenty to fucking forty four cents. No count. I An had hour, the highest nigga. paid jail. And then when I was in hour. The, I was in the Feds 2008, I had the highest paid job in the whole jail. I made a dollar sixty seven. And I had the highest paid and job. And that's a lot. That's that was the that's I was the a shit. Lot. I was the shit. Nigga. Like yeah. I said, the average I wanna say, and I know that some of these people are gonna be like, uh uh-uh, uh, it was this, it yeah, was that. Hey man, know. maybe it varied for your bullshit ass. But I'm being real, man. Like the average is like 20 40, cent, 40, 40 cent, yeah, 40 yeah. cents. The hardest job. And the hardest job. The kitchen, the laundry. Imagine laundry from the hole. The hole is where all of because I, I talked about this too a lot. They got rid of a lot of that funding for mental health. In like the 70s and the 80s. When we was kids before we was born, when you was crazy, you would go live in some building for the rest of your life. Now, when you crazy, you either homeless or you end up in the county. People talk a lot of shit about police, but police are the number one people that deal with all the crazy people. This guy's eating shit on the train station stop, at the bus stop. The cop got to go get the shit out of his hand. Like, that's why they so tense like that. That's why they shoot so fast. They going through a lot of shit that they shouldn't even be going through. Because that's the cops don't know how to deal with a crazy person, that's period. That's crazy. I've never heard nobody speak on that. That's some real like, shit. Like, for real. Like, because I, I ain't going to lie, I've been a cop basher. It's in my record. Like, I got a, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's problems with me, nigga. It's two cars stopping, nigga, for me. Fuck, fuck them. It ain't no one. Like, and they going to wait till the other car get there. Because yeah, it's the in car. the record. Like, people don't understand. Them computers, and I hate, I hate this shit. But those computers in them cop cars, them people, like you said, they're not trained to deal with people daily. Nope. That computer tells them how to deal with you. Yep. That's why they get your ID. They say, hey, give me a second. They yep. go back to the car. They, they run, run your bitch. name yeah. so they can see who the fuck you are. That's a fact. And that's how they're going to treat you. Period. You could have changed your life 10 years from now. It Laura. don't matter. Honestly, you could have been a fuck up 10 years ago, Laura, and you really changed your life. Now, I'm saying we know never. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just using it as an example. Like, you could fuck up and have a good 10-year run of just going to church every Sunday, yeah. being a good person, just, you know, really Donate trying to help to the, the homeless, community. all kind of all shit. Mm -hmm. But let your ass get stopped one night. That motherfucker gonna still treat you accordingly to what the fuck that computer Like it's 2005. Said. If your jacket says that you pulled out a gun or you did anything for they treating you like you got a gun on you. If you get, and then on top of that, from the door you getting treated a certain way because you a nigga. So it's you a nigga, then you got a record. They don't care that it's 12 years ago. They can't even see that. All they see is what you were charged with. They're not really getting into it. You know what I mean? I personally fuck the police. I don't fuck with the police. I am somebody that supports defund the police. I know a lot of people, a lot of black people think that's stupid when we say defund the police, but the whole point is 
the police have been infiltrated by the Klan. I know it sounds crazy, but they have. When the Ku Klux Klan was all, they couldn't march, you know, like they wanted and burn crosses like they wanted, they start telling them niggas, look, become police officers, probation officers. These is their grandpops. Now the grandkids are cops. They judges. They lawyers. They're so deep in that shit, there's no way to fix it other than get them all out. And the new batch has to have a certain amount of training. They need to have college degrees. They need to um, know how to deal with people with mental health. And let me tell you something else. This cause and it's crazy. I feel like I'm defending the police, but I'm key. I like to keep it real. My name is Johnny Blue Schmo. I'm a white boy from the county, right? I go get this job because my grandpa was a cop. The first place they 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 placed me, let's say for the Philadelphians. I'm from Montgomery County, never seen them Montgomery County. They placed me in the middle of North Philly. My first day on the job in the middle of the trenches. Does that make any sense to anybody? No. The no. nigga be such a rookie, they be calling him out. My aunt is 60 years old. We sitting and talking outside. Go give me a pack of cigarettes. Let's walk. She look at this rookie. This nigga knew this pussy ass nigga. I say, so how long you been a cop? He said, well, I've been a cop for bubble. Well, how long you been a cop? Been 90 days. She smelled it on him. And she's 60. And she can smell that he's he don't know nothing. Two niggas on the corner. Seeing each other, they ain't seen each other in a while, or two niggas arguing about a basketball game to a person that's not from the hood, that might look like a fight. You no, know, does this sound crazy? And I ain't, I'm just using this as a hypothetical. You know what would be so crazy? It, it needs to be people from the hood to be the police. That's the what the fuck I'm saying. Hey, I'm gonna be real because they actually gonna know how to deal with people. Their patience gonna be a little bit different. Hell, this nigga might know this nigga. Be like, bro, I know your know whole your family. family. Church. Yes. Come on, what we doing? I call and your that grandma. Split second might have calmed him the that's fuck down. That's a fact. To just change the whole dynamic of that the situation. Fact, but when you got this little motherfucker coming up on me, he's 21 years old, Donnie. He's 21 years old. He ain't never even seen, I'm fucking 20 years older than him, let's just say. Mm -hmm. And I can tell, I've been in the, running with the law forever. So I know how they're going to, nine times out of ten, supposed to treat you. And I just see him on some sucker shit, I'm going to take advantage of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Straight up, yeah. especially he a young, he's a young kid. He's still a young punk to me. I don't give a fuck if he got a badge on or not. Right. Yeah, that's some real shit. So it's you... got to be. It's a mind fuck when you standing inside of a pod and you know the police got a problem with you and he pull you out talking about he gonna fuck you up, nigga. And you fifteen years older than him and you can't do nothing. Come on, it's crazy. It's, I've it's... had it happen to me. Nigga tried to call me Rodriguez. He thought I was Spanish and I ignored him. Now on my mama, because I was checking shit up in there. Like, nigga, but you know I, how I had the power was, nigga, through all the stores, how you play. Right. It's how you play, so I know how to make moves. The nigga you know was mad saying? when you ignored him, And he though. was mad that I ignored him yeah. about some shit. He seen, I'm just taking care of my business. Mm -hmm. And he was mad that I ignored him. He said, Rodriguez, come here, man. I don't know who the fuck that is. Right. Nigga, it I'm just keeping me. that shit a band. Yeah. I don't know who that is, bro. Right, right, right. So I didn't answer to him. Mm -hmm. He went up and got the book out, because you know the book's got all of our pictures in it. Mm -hmm. He went and got the book out. I'm looking at him. He went and looked at my name correctly. Then that's when he called me. I came up. He stepped me out in the motherfucking hallway and was like, what's up? What, you got a problem? He was drinking on the job. Oh, he was drunk. I used to see him all the time. He used to keep this canister with him. Mm-hmm. He has always had his thermos with him. And he be drinking. I smelt it on him when he, he got up pissy. close on me. He pissed. Yeah, I smelt it on him when he got up close on me. And uh, as he's talking shit to me, here comes another young guard walking in, little buff nigga. He walk in, like standing there waiting, like, say something. We fucking you fuck up, right? Up. We yeah. fucking you up right here in his hallway. I said, look, bro, I ain't got no problems with you. I said, but that just wasn't my last name. Right. Because I don't give a fuck. If I call you, you need to come. You see that shit? That's how like, they are. It's a, it's a mind fuck. It's fucked up when like- They're something. scum. There's nobody yeah. worse than a CO no. to me. They scum. They scumbags. No. Like scum to the point, I can meet a guy right now, Lori. I can meet somebody, like him, he cool as shit. The minute he tell me a CO, it's over. Any really any of them because they freaks, they nasty. Ask the prostitutes and shit. The cops always want you to shit on them, do freaky shit, peg them. Cops are freaky. Because they're still people. Just freaks. because you give them a fucking badge does not mean that they're just about to get ready to walk this fucking one way rope to glory. I'm sorry, homie. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's you not. know what I mean. It's yeah. not. So for people to even expect that out of them, like with the fucking psych evaluations, I don't know how. Uh, when they do them like maybe every few years yeah. or some shit. No, nah, man. You need to be doing them every three months no for some cap. of these motherfuckers, no man. Cap. No cap. It's job, certain jobs you get, they say you take a burnout course like drug, drug therapists, people that work with the homes, people that work with AIDS, people. Just When you work in them jobs where it's like 
Like when you said I have a regular job, my cousins ran a um, methadone maintenance program. So you would come if you was on methadone. If you don't know at home, methadone is what people use to get off of heroin. But most yeah. of them end up addicted yeah. to methadone. Yeah. And it's a long ass, you know. Yeah. So we run a house with 12 bitches in them. And out the two, I did that for probably a year, year and a half. Out of all of them, one of them was sober because I tried to go to college. And she ended up being in my class. And I remember walking to class with her. And in a week, I remember walking past her selling pussy back on dope. Dentures out that fast. So it's like with them kind of jobs, you go to these burnout courses because it'll really burn you out. These cops do this shit every day, all day, see the worst of the worst. And that's why when they run into the black doctor, they treat them like shit. It's not an excuse, but they don't. That's why he's saying do psych evals faster because these niggas take one second to snap, but this nigga got a license to kill. So how many motherfuckers is at risk? It's one neighborhood at risk. It'll be one cop, a bad cop. He get arrested and come out that what he been doing, everybody talking. This nigga has been terrorizing the same neighborhood for 20 years though. Whooping people ass, stopping people, taking shit. You know what I mean? I love when them stories come out where the cops stealing the coke, taking the money. You know what I mean? Like, it's because it's just, that's how it really is in the hood. You one cops in New York steal all that Ace of Spades? No, I didn't. Yeah, they stole about, I believe they a stole. Case of Ace of Spades? Yeah, the police did. They stole, like, I think it was like $2,500 worth of spades. Just petty shit. Yeah, it was, it was some petty shit. I'm like, damn. They, but they must have felt comfortable. Yeah, they did. You know what I'm saying? They must have felt comfortable to take that. They're like, nigga, y'all should have saw what we got last month. Listen, listen. Nigga, you we ever see just the 75th? This to go party with what we got last month. You ever see month. the 65th documentary about them cops from Brooklyn? No, I did not. Oh, my God. I'm talking about he would find you, find a brick, mind you. This is the 80s when it was out. Coke was around. You know what I mean? And it was real. It was real. It was real pure, Coke. Pure Coke. No this Fetty. Shit, Hold the Fetty. Everybody giving up Fetty because it's. And, the bricks are cheaper. Yeah, it's the bricks crazy. Are for fed, the the fetty shit is disgusting. But I want you to continue to tell the story. But I know that 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 man, that fentanyl shit, it's cheaper to get. Man, I'm gonna tell you a story about the fetty shit too. But the um, he would come to your house, find the brick, right? They would mm. beat your ass, tie you up, and then he would call his niggas to the back door and be like, "The coke is right by the washing machine." So by the time you caught your case, it wasn't no drugs. But who you gonna tell? Mona, you know who would tell these niggas that, right? Mm. Other drug dealers. Yeah, yep. That's how you got you gotta niggas watch out that. the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how you, man, tell him been going on. Yeah. Nigga, what you mean? Nigga, That's I can get smart. this nigga to, hey, I can get this nigga out the way. Out it's going to make way. me more dough. Uh -huh. I ain't got a feud with his clique no more because I know once he goes to jail for life, his whole clique starts. They falling apart. And I ain't got to catch a body. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. He got he was working with a Dominican gang and they worked together. And they even on that movie, that's a great documentary. On the documentary, this guy from the Dominican gang was there. Like, yeah, man. I'm it checking was, it out. It was that a good joint. The 65th was a good it, it, it was it's such a good joint because the cop had the same drug dealer story. He started getting so much money, yeah. he started snorting and went to his head, he got sloppy. He he not even picking his checks up from work. Speaking he pulling up in the two door, not picking his checks up. He I, was eating. I gotta ask you, you know, because while we're on the the telling kick, and you know, I don't really know what's going on in the case just yet. I want to watch, but what you think about the the, the gunner and uh, young thug situation? I'm, I'm a huge that. fan of thug. I'm a I fan of gunner thug. too. But I'm a fuck huge fan of thug. So it was fuck gunner. It was fuck gunner the day that shit came out when he does when he reads the statement out loud. It 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 irritated me because the internet was acting the people even street niggas. Being that they love this nigga music so much and they love the, the whole movement, the slime movement, that they were making so many excuses. and did it. it was a real simple, clear-cut case for anybody in no street shit. If Thug's whole case is, this is not a game, this is just music, and Gunna signs a deal that says, that is a gang, I have nothing to do with them, right? That's telling. And you fucking up his defense. So to me, from the gate, Gunna told. But also for me, I never thought he wasn't going to tell. He to me when I see Gunner, I don't see street nigga. I don't see I don't see that nigga. And I see artists. Not no disrespect, but I feel like if he wasn't a rapper, he would be a dweeb doing something dweeb. So I'm with you. I'm a ride. <clears throat> no, because I'm a ride on this one. Because I feel like that. Like Gunner was a real artist. Right. He wasn't anything else. Right. People are looking at him like, oh well, you were the face of YSL as an artist. As an artist. As an artist. Not as a frontline pusher. He's not even a blood. Not to be, you know what I mean? But he's not a blood, he's a crib. So it's like, how is he? I feel like he was there for his artistry. So I never was surprised. Now the rest of them niggas, and his I ain't little brother. It's cool that he told. No, we're not saying no that. We're not saying that. You know that. what I'm saying? But it's rules on who can tell. 
I'm tired of that too. Uh, oh, uh, some bitch, some lady, 40 years old, niggas keep sell, sit on the step selling drugs and tell them to get off the never get on the step. Niggas shoot somebody. She tells the cops, yeah, I seen it. He shot him right on my step. She's not a rat. She's a fucking woman that go back and forth to work. I don't care if she smoke weed or whatever. You have to be a street participant to be considered a rat. That means you are profiting. Talk that shit. You are profiting off of street money. And that's even you scammer bitches. Because you scammer bitches and niggas be telling to. Yeah. Scammers, motherfucking um, drug dealers. Really, really, if you sell pussy. You know what I mean? All that. Any of them lanes where, you, where you're profiting off of something that's illegal. Meaning if something happens at your job that you do, you can't call the cops and say, this nigga just cut the shit or this nigga just shorted me a thousand dollars right you can't do that's that. because what you're doing is illegal I so in the same do that one time on cops so did i so the fake called crack the police yeah and was mad that she got sold fake crack she told that cop to his face i gave him 20 dollars for rock and i didn't the, get rock that lady said we don't even have rock over here she said because see i'm a prostitute she said i sell pussy that cop said, I was sell like pussy. That ain't even what you I see do. what i'm saying with the cops hey. that, <laughs> that's that cop's regular day that's that cop's regular day. Taking a report from a crackhead, she sold me fake coke, and going to that person saying, I ain't selling no fake coke because I sell pussy. I don't sell nothing but pussy, not coke. That's a day in she the life say, of a cop. y'all know me, she pretty much telling y'all can pull my rap sheet up. Like, yeah. go to y'all little funky-ass computer and assess the situation. Yeah. Because y'all going to know ain't nothing. I, she's, I smoke crack. Yeah. And I sell pussy. Yeah. Now, back to the question, I feel a way for Thug because I love him and I, he's so successful and I understand how it is to, because it's like, you rapping, you want to rap. Look at Bobby Schmurter and them. You want to rap, but you're still living your life. You know, when you're an artist, when you're creative, just like you, a lot of us ends up in our content. We, especially me and you, we give it up like ourselves. This nigga acts just like he acts off camera, just in case you was curious. And I'm sure he could say the same about me. You understand? Oh, thanks. So it's like, when you giving it up like that, and you might put some criminal shit in your music or criminal shit in your art or criminal, you know what I mean? Because you comes out of your creativity. So to see a nigga that get that high up and then it hit him, then it hurts. It physically hurts me that he going through that. I hate it. But it's like, I know he not telling nothing because he's you know, a stand up nigga. I, I know like, he not. I like the conversations me and you have, me and Donnie. We have like the same because, you know, we all a little older. You know yeah. what I mean? So we assess shit a little bit better than the young ones do. So a I lot just of it better. Them to listen to this, man, like, and understand what really be going on. What takes place. Like, what really takes place in this shit. And I think that you hit it on the head with that. You was like, man, it takes a real, you have to be a street participant mm -hmm. <clears throat> for it to matter. Yeah. There still are real civilians. That's now, right. what I think has gotten fucked up is because there's became a hybrid, right? Mm -hmm. Where there's street people that are telling. Yeah. That have claimed that they were street people, did all the street shit, wanted to take all the streets' money, uh -huh. but still go in there and want to go tell. The killers tell it too, which is crazy. I think a rat on you and shoot you when you call them a rat. That's heavy. You know, I, yeah, I remember when people really talked about how they moved in their music, versus you put them to the test to even fifteen percent of that and they fold. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That shit really trips me out today. The music's not even the same. Yeah. You don't. I don't know. This nigga said, I really shot this nigga on fucking 51st Street. Or I shoot niggas when I'm over there in the 50s. And nigga, you ain't never even been over there. Yeah. You don't know them people. They don't know you. They don't know you. And now when they hear this, now they got a real fucking problem uh -huh. with you. They know you's a sucker. Now you dead me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of rappers today run scared of that. Mm -hmm. Like you don't see a nigga. And I'm not saying when you change your life, you get money, man. You lead a hood. But... Don't nobody even know you. You start to look into, you go look at these niggas' history and you start to see like, nigga, you have really good ass parents. Uh -huh. Like your life was straight. Came up well. Mm -hmm. You had a family, nigga, you had a house, food in the refrigerator, nigga. You, mom and daddy take you go get some shoes once a week, nigga, some clothes. Yeah. Like you always fresh, you always fly. They make sure you got a few dollars in your pocket so uh -huh. you ain't out here knocking nothing up. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Imagine being a nigga dad. And you raised him well, got raised him in suburbs. You come from that, but That's he ain't never hurt. touched it. And his first mixtape by how his stomach touched because he never had his father. That hurts. And he was starving. That's going to hurt. All lies. And the nigga go big with it. He viral with it. He got an album and all that. And the whole story is based on bullshit because you know you broke your back to raise that nigga that well. That shit ruins relationships. It should. It ruins relationships. It and it's should. fucked up. I don't... I don't know if I say it should because family's supposed to be family. Yeah. No matter what's going on, no matter how it's going, I get these days, there's siblings and other family members that 
they can have the most pettiest ass argument and don't talk for years. Never. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For years, homie. And it separates the whole family. The kids now, don't little, know why they don't know Aunt Ruby. That used to be they don't even each know other. each other. Yeah, they, they used to see each other. Now they don't even know each other. They try to get together later on through life, and they're so different. They yeah. didn't grow with each other. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah, I just feel like it's, it's fucked up out here. It's a reality, though. Yeah. But imagine sure. being a nigga father, and you, I mean, you he, he spoiled. You spoiled the nigga. And his first album is all about how it was hard growing up with just his mom and they was starving and all. It's like, please, my mother would my mother would be at the shows with a mic in the back, like, this bitch is lying. And it's like, even with me, I'm real open about my father not raising me and not taking care of me. That nigga, he hears what I'm saying. What the fuck? He has never called me and said, why you say that? Because he know what the fuck is the vibes. Nigga, you wasn't around. That's just what it is. You shitty. You, my father's a piece of shit. His name's Damon. But let's think about this, right? I used to think like that Fuck too, him. right? Hey, and you know, that's on your heart. I can't take that from you. Mm -hmm. But let me talk to you about it. Okay. So maybe maybe I can give you a different theory to it, right? Oh, please do. Would you rather... I mean, yeah, I would have wanted to have a father. That's cool. But think about what you might not have been. What if you wouldn't have been this? Because we love you. Yeah. Think about it. What's built you? That's the real what shit. What if him being there wouldn't have never built this? And I feel like we need this in this space. Yeah, it's That's real. why you're here to talk the way that you talk today. Walk the way you walk yeah. today. That's of looking at it You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you really look at it, because I'm afraid to see what it would have been with it. Because I don't know that side. Everybody's always yeah. afraid of the unknown. Yeah. Right, Donnie? Everybody's always afraid of the unknown. So I'm afraid of knowing... Because I've went so long without it and had to make this life, I don't know what it's like to have them full time. Mm -hmm. I to have my mom and my dad there. Like, what would I have been? It's like a Tootsie Pop. Hey, man, how many licks does it take to get to the center of that motherfucker? The world will never know. Mm -hmm. The I world will shit. never motherfucking know, right? <laughs> he just plays this shit a certain way. Sit there and hit it one, two, and three, and he bit on the motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, you never really got down to it. Mm -hmm. I will say this, to be fair towards my pop, Jail broke us up originally. I feel like if he never caught that case, we wouldn't have fell off. But that's that's proof that how, and I want you niggas to listen to that too, especially you men. When you have a kid, you sacrifice. And the way the sacrifices is maybe I won't rob every store on the street. Maybe I'll rob one because I want to be in this kid's life. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we make decisions we adults for a fact. When I had my first child, I remember thinking, she'll never talk to me over a jail phone. I'm not letting it happen. It's never going to be, I'm on the phone with my daughter, and I'm talking about homework or who bullied her at school, and then it's, you had 15 seconds on the call, and I got to say, I'm going to call you back. Or some dickhead CEO that came to work drunk that don't feel like doing nothing, and he locks us in for the whole day with no explanation, yeah. and he ain't got to explain it to nobody. Yeah. He could decide to lock us in every fucking day, every time he on his shift, if he wants to. And that's the time I got to call my daughter because she gets off of school at four. I never allowed it to happen, and I have it. Thank God. I figured out a way to not be calling my kids you know from jail. Program. And, you know, shout out to my man, Uncle Dark, because he had gave me a story once he served. I think he served 10 years in the feds. And um, he was like, I would never call home to my friend. He says, I don't want to hear about how y'all having fun. Mm -hmm. How y'all doing? They says I make one phone call a week, and that was to my mama every Sunday. Yeah, so I would talk to her for a few minutes. And I went ten years without talking. And he did that for her because yeah. she needed that. But he did. But he did ten years. He said, "Man, just every Sunday, one Sunday out the week, mm -hmm. or one Sunday, man, every Sunday he would hit mm -hmm. her up. He said he would talk to his mama. That said, he said because when I would call my friends, he was like." They would tell me, oh, we having a good time, such and such over it was here. Horrible. Man, we over here, nigga, having the time of our life. We can't wait till you get out. Don't no nigga in jail want to hear that shit. Fuck no, no. Look, Donnie even laughing. Don't no nigga want to hear that shit, nigga. Mm. I've <laughs> How y'all having fun and you putting other people on the phone I ain't, I've been wanting to see? Y'all all together? You said I know how to program me in jail. First of all, I'm Muslim by faith. You know, in Philadelphia, everybody's Muslim, really. But I'm Muslim by faith, and I didn't, I'm not like Muslim by... I didn't discover Islam in jail. Times a day. No, I don't. I'm not practicing. I'm yeah. not practicing. But I'm Muslim. Like that's I was all about it say, is. You know how they do? No booze, no pork, no, no nothing. Pussy, no pretty nothing. much. Yeah. It's, it's, hey, it's, they wait, nigga. Pray three times a day, like the real Muslims. The niggas, <laughs> five, I'm five, five, talking five. about the. Yeah, five, five, times, man, a five times a day. Yeah. They, they make the ones that's just selling bean pies. I'm talking about the real ones. And you know, <laughs> all the Muslims, all the Muslims that I know, nah, for real, Shout all, to the, all the real Muslims that I know are balling. Yeah. You're like, man, I, every time I make me something, man, I pray. I mm -hmm. pray through all my mm -hmm. blessings. That's all Islam is about is praying. People, you pray people. through all your blessings, man. Like, and I be, man, they be on. Yeah. Really, really on, bro. Islam, the, the, the thing about 
The thing about being Muslim or just Islam in general, it's a really, really peaceful religion. That's all it's about is praying, peace. praising God. Yeah, yeah even peace. when we sneeze. When I sneeze, I'm supposed to say, Alhamdulillah means all praises to God. And then the next Muslim next to me is supposed to say, Yumukalah. So that's like, thank you for thanking her for cleaning the nasal passages. Mm -hmm. And I'm just using that example because that's we just constantly, constantly, it's about cleaning and prayer. A Muslim, a good Muslim is taught by our clergy, our pastor is called Imam. Mm. So the Imam, you just get together, you get married, you make Muslim kids, teach them how to, <laughs> to pray and to be good. And that's yeah. it. Fasting once a year, twice a year, really. Um, praying five times a day. Giving back to the community. Like, we have to feed the homeless. Really we don't have a way around that. You know what I mean? Mm, and mom. One second. Wait, and wait. marriage. Other than that, they don't really expect anything. But... Yeah. And on the East Coast, cities like Philadelphia, um, Newark, New Jersey, um, it is, black culture is like 80% Muslim. Like, be, and it's, Muslim, Islam is so heavy in the city. This is my guy, Tom Flies. He's from South Philly, right? A huge, huge Muslim population where Beanie Siegel from. Tom knows Arabic because in Philly, we all use Arabic. You know what I mean? It's like that second language. You know what I mean? Because it's that popular. Over here, it's not as popular, so it's a little different. One thing I'll say as a Muslim is we're judged the most because of our outfits. So technically, I should have on an overgarment. You can't see nothing. Some... People even go down to niqabs. You only see the eyes. So we get judged a little more than other people when Christianity and, and, and Islam is the same religion. The only difference is Muslims don't believe that Jesus is the son of Christ. So we we only praise God, and it's the same God a Christian prays, right? But we praise Jesus, peace of us be upon him, as a prophet, not as the son of God. We don't do that. Other than that, it's the same thing. You can find, I could find passages in the Bible that says women should cover when they pray. You know what I mean? Women should listen to their husbands. It's the same thing. And that's you another feel thing. Like women should listen to their husbands? Yes, I'm Muslim. Yeah. I, I'm Muslim to the point if I was married and my husband wanted another wife, he you, can get that. You don't seem <clears throat> too submissive. <laughs> You're not like, and then there's nothing wrong. I'm going to blow like, your mind. Phelps, she don't seem up. like she come off. Maybe it's because you know what it is. We don't see too many strong women anymore. So a nigga don't know how to really. Uh, and I'm not saying every woman. I'm just yeah. saying you don't really see too many strong women anymore. So when you see one, you will think like, hey, she's not yeah. really submissive because- That's common, sure. Most people, you know? but honestly, Phelps, when you eat, I bring you your plate, take it from you. I don't let you get sold, I don't let you get drinks. Like I am super submissive. Like I don't, my nigga don't wash no clothes. My, I'm single now. I'm single now. <laughs> single. Um, but my nigga don't wash no clothes, don't cook no meals. I mean, I'm really literally- Bring you your plate. You want bread, you want hot sauce, I bring that. When you're done eating, I take your plate. If you want another plate, I get your plate. Like, I want it. I feel like that's, and you know, I do that. I have that going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I believe in structure and balance, you know? And um, it's not <laughs> Yo, really about, he I know, you. here comes the other he foot coming you. down. <laughs> Felt I don't love feel you. like it should fall in religion to anything. I feel like that's it's just automatic. religion of life. That should be automatic. If you don't want to do that for me, something's wrong with you. You must not really love me. Come on, something yeah. as simple as bringing me a motherfucking plate. So what do you some expect chicks, on your bitch, sir? Some chicks take that shit disrespectful. I'm not taking your plate to the kitchen. I'm not bringing you your plate. Here, the food's done. Here, put it on your plate. I almost take it disrespectful Bitches when you try to make your plate. Bitches only want to they go to barbecues because they want to front in front of everybody else trying Fuck to act like no. they just being this real motherfucker. No. But when you get to the house, bitch can't even put some pizza rolls on the plate and put them in the microwave and warm them Bro, up for 40 seconds. You know why? You know Let's how, keep the shit a band, You know Jack? how when you eat dinner, right? And yeah. the bitch say, do you want, y'all want to take it home? I get the container and I make his plate for the bag. Would you warm me up some pizza rolls? I, That's my real question here. I would I'm probably, sorry. I know this is off I would right probably now. make you a pizza. I would be offended by he wanted pizza rolls. Let's make a pizza. Yeah. I used to, my nigga came home, I'll never forget because I tell the story every time people be shot. Came home three in the morning, fucked up one lasagna. He had lasagna about five. No bad. That's my nigga. But now you got to think. only takes a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and I don't do no. Stouffer's only takes a couple hours. I don't do no no canned greens. I'm collard greens from scratch, fried chicken. I cook, I cook my ass off. Whole meals. Listen, fried chicken, baked macaroni, collard greens, and yams. 
all that from scratch though. None of that can shit. People be shocked, but I'm totally like, I even know how to shut the fuck up. I'm older. Like you can't be back and forth with no nigga like that. I don't right. do that. Let's let's talk about you a little bit, Mo. Um, I know you used to work with Wallow and Gilly, right? Yes, I did. You used to do a lot of work with them. Not a lot. Well, yeah, I didn't well, you know, doing game. something to somebody, it could be a lot. Yeah, well, it was You know dead. what I'm saying? Time is a lot for me. Yeah, I for sure. Fuck if I spend five minutes, it's, that's sure. a lot. And I worked with them niggas in the pandemic. That's a lot, nigga. When you wasn't allowed to go outside. I worked on Men's of a Game when you weren't supposed to be outside. We weren't even supposed to be doing that. Remember, because you couldn't even be in a room with more than such and such people. Yeah, but I did Men's of a Game for like three months. And mind you, they had put it on it. I'm real close with Gilly's sister, because Philly's small. We from North Philly, and we Muslim. So I'm close with Gilly's sister, and she was like, bitch, because she would always say, go live with him. Y'all funny, you and my brother, go live with him. And Gilly has been a celebrity in Philadelphia since I was 13. So I was like, fuck, no, I'm not going live with that loud-ass, bald-head nigga. <laughs> so she like, um, she hit me. She like, they just said, make a video why you should be on Menazza for Gang. They had just lost one of the hosts, and um, tell them why they should pick you. So they did one girl, she posted a video, and then I posted mine. My video got more likes and views than any other video on the Million Dollars for Game page. So Gilly hit me like 12 a.m. and um, was like, yo, you want to pull up tomorrow? I'm like, bet. So I come. He like, we just doing tryouts. We do the first episode. We get through it. Niggas cracking up in there. Wallow jump off his feet. That's it. She the one, cuz. She that one. Gilly looked at that nigga. Like, yo, if looks get killed. Like, sit the fuck down, nigga. Don't let her know we like her, you know? That day, we filmed three episodes, and then we did that for like three months, and then they just stopped speaking to me. <laughs> yeah. There's no, uh, I never gave you no explanation. Took me out the good morning group text. You know how everybody be like, good morning, y'all. I ain't hey, getting nothing. Good and morning. I, you know, you ain't even got to say if there was, if like, what it was, if there was an explanation, but do you feel like they gave you a, an explanation to it? A nigga, they ghosted me. They stopped speaking to me. And honestly, like, at first, because I, I, number one, I'm new to this. So I was already, bro, when Million Dollars Worth Game called me, I had been doing this comedian shit for six months. What was it, like six, seven months or something? I literally, I went viral. I prayed. I was like, God, please give me a sign. I got this square ass nigga. He bought me this big ass house. I'm thinking I'm up. I made it. My aunt's coming from North Philly. Oh, this house beautiful. We got a good man. Don't leave him. But I felt empty, Laura. I felt like I ain't have shit. And I felt weird about it. And I wasn't breaking the law. So I'm thinking I'm a magically my life is going to be. And that's good for people at home because it's like you swear it's that one thing you missing. Child, you get that and you remember it's 10 more things that you want. But I prayed. I'm like, God, if it's a reason why. I'm funny. If I'm really that funny, can you please give me a sign and tell me so I can know what to do? Because all I ever right. knew was dude was street shit. You know what I mean? I fucking, it was probably 11 a.m. I pray. I'm like, God, just give me a sign, right? I put out two videos, 11.45. I'll never forget. My memory is fucked up, but this was a big deal in my life. I, like 11.45, I put it on Twitter, Instagram, regular shit, but I had never tried Facebook. I get on Facebook. I don't want that. I want some of the extra ice, though. What you want? No, I want the extra ice. Okay. That's where so. we're going to bump heads at. <laughs> I made some. I made some, heads though. Ice. I made some ice. You did some not ice make though. no ice. When we were standing there, I made ice. It wasn't ready yet. Listen, so boom. You, for real, for y'all make me lose my story. So all right, you, um, <laughs> I pray. I put the video out. But I had never did Facebook. So I'm like, fuck it. I throw it on Facebook. Bro, my first video ever on Facebook. Guess how many views I got? Guess. Come on, Lord. Give me a good guess. Three point five million first try. Whoa! And that was the sign. Was it? Hey, was it? Hey, because I gotta know, right? Was it? The, he said, why "Whoa!" You, why you being uh, weird to me? Fuck no! I liked it that one. That was like way years later. I'm sure like you like that one. Everyone liked like that one. Fresh, red. I said, "I told you." I said, Ooh, I, know. I know. That's ass, why I had my red nails too. And my dick sucking nails. I was like, "Man, I would have had her motherfucking ass." And my dick suck nails. <laughs> you did. So my listen. Is what I'm at, church. So listen. So in my mind, right? Because I'm a street bitch. I'm a hustler. I said, "Wait a minute. They think I'm a comedian. I'm ready." So a nigga called me. He like, "Yo, you you ever do stand up?" I thank you, baby. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I do stand up all the time, bro. Never did it. Was you like, so that's that East Coast shit to me. I swear to God. Never did like, it. Like, hey, I swear, homie, and I've said this shit before, and I love East Coast people. Don't get it fucked up. But I be noticing it's like, y'all do everything better. It doesn't matter. Even if you ain't never did it before in your life, hell yeah, I can do it. That shit hella easy. Oh, my God. Listen, so. That boom. shit easy as hell. Put the keys back. 
So boom. So I'm a, I'm top deleted. I've been deleted more than anybody in the world. So they delete my page. So I had posted on my page like I'm doing stand up. Y'all catch it. They delete the page, but in my mind I'm thinking, fuck it. Nobody won't know I did it. So if I fuck up. Nobody is It's it. worth a try. I ain't saying it's fucked up or it's bad. Bro. Like, you got to try. Like, nigga, what's Bro. the worst they going to say? What's though? the worst they going to do, right? So, I come. I do it. I get off the stage. Mind you, I'm killing. First thing I say, some bullshit about I lost something in my pocket. They laugh. I'm thinking, I ain't even playing. I'm not even telling jokes. Whatever. It's sweet. 14 minutes. I never forget this shit. Bitch, pass out in the back off Zanny. She fall down. Everybody look at her. I sneak off the stage. When I go to the stage, somebody whisper, can I take a picture? I say, yeah, let's go right here. The promoter comes out and says, listen, can you please stop taking pictures? Because there's nobody else for nobody to tell jokes to. Everybody came for me. I sold it out. It was me. So when I go, now the comics, the headliners, everybody else, they don't have nobody to tell jokes to because they all out front trying to take pictures. I had to come back in and sit down in the seat. Nobody said the whole show, they had to stop it. Every motherfucker in there bought a ticket for me. The promoter hit me a day later, gave me a couple dollars. Like, I got to pay you something, bro. You sold it out. It was you. They all came for you. We ain't had nobody tell jokes to. And after that, I'm like, all right, I'm a comic. That was December. By that May, I was on Men Other Again. It was that fast. Like, I became an entertainer in front of niggas' eyes. I had never done half that shit. Because you popping right now. Listen. And you have also the Don't Call Me White Girl podcast, correct? That's what you call it. Yep. But my first podcast, I shot it in the hood. And it was dangerous as fuck, and I, and nobody watched it but me and my cousins. Are you? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are you um, are you still cutting it on breakbeat? Or are you doing your own? No, we doing it with breakbeat. This podcast break is with breakbeat. Cool. That's yeah. why I say that shit's cool. I, I mean, we started. We I started. like the look of it. I just had to ask because I. Yeah. It seems so organic when me and you sat down, which is coming out soon, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I went on Don't Call Me White Girl podcast. Yeah, great time. Longest episode I ever like, shot. Hey, and it just felt, but it was easy. Yeah, it was Come good. On, shit easy. Yeah. I told you I was going to take care Bro, of it. Bro, I don't know if people know how this happened. This, let me tell you how this happened. I do Adam's show 2021. And that was a whole new, for the love of God, I called the nigga Adam Jumper the whole episode. Hey, Adam Jumper. Hey, Adam. <laughs> Didn't know the nigga did porn, nothing. Made a friend. That's my dog now. Fuck with Adam. We do the show. In the comments, because of course, I'm, I never look at comments, but I'm looking because this is not my viewers. This is all new people. Probably, I'm going to say 70, 80%. She needs to meet Sharp. She needs, and I Google Sharp. That's how it happened. And I'm like, oh shit, I need to meet him. Like, I literally watched it. So I'm underbelly and watched it, like the whole thing. And then the second thought I thought was, we going to rumble. <laughs> we going to rumble. That's why they want to see us. They think we going we gonna to rumble. You know but what's so cold? It, it fuck them up, though, when like I sit down with people like you. I've talked to, you know, I've talked to, obviously, don't call me white girl. I've talked to Brittany Renner. You know, I've talked to these women, and we always hit it off. Like, Brittany Renner, I feel like I've known you forever, Sharp. Mm -hmm. I said, like, I just feel Solid like I've known nigga. him. Yeah, she's like, I feel like I've known you forever, like, because I'm bringing it thorough, man. Like, I don't be on no bullshit. And to be real with you, <clears throat> what I want to tell you is you need to come down here and come do some work with me. I'm looking for a co-host for the Sharp Tank. That should be crazy. Female, preferably. You know, but even if I got to do it by myself, shit, I'm always going to rock on it. And maybe me and you, we can do something else on the side and get it going. We doing something. We have to. It's too It's too. We easy. can merge something to make something new. East Coast, West Coast, we just merge so well. It's I've great. been wanting to work with you. I, I've And the, the couple times that I've gotten to, just to be able to sit down with you, it's been great. So, hey, man, let's make some money. Listen, I'm with it. I'm down. Let's make some money. I'm down. Back to the- uh, I just had to document that because I know from this day forward it's going to change for you. <laughs> so you can go back and look on this video and be like, damn, This is where it you, started. You yep. told me, nigga. Yeah, yeah. You told me right there on the interview. Yeah, you what was you? What was the other question you asked about working with Gillian Wallow? I just wanted to know if like y'all are still, you know, cool today. Y'all yeah. talk today. Is everything Let straight? Me, I'm going to say this. I did. I was so new in this shit. I didn't realize about bigger brands. Million Dollars Worth of Game as a brand was so fucking big that after I did it for a year straight, people said, "What happened with Gil and Wallow? What was it?" And I never spoke on nothing. Gil and Wallow have had a couple different hosts that go on these smear campaigns for weeks and do interviews and they oh, I've, shit. Oh, I've, I've seen it firsthand. I'm sure, and that's the thing. I've seen. I've seen it happen. Where people just go on smear campaigns. Oh and my do god! Shit. Like, I've seen that. Like where they'll leave a company, mm -hmm. go fucking crazy. Listen, if now listen, make this clear so y'all can hear it clearly. If I court Gil stealing out of my pocketbook, and if Wallow punched me in my face, you would never know that. 
I am thorough for real. Let me show you how to duggy. Let me teach you how to walk. Is locker room talk, baby. You don't take it outside of it, and that's just game. I was taught, man, just doing business. Anything else is gonna seem emotional. And it's fucking proof because me and him are from opposite sides of the world, and that's an automatic. You keep your fucking mouth shut. This shit happened, of course. Did I feel done dirty? Of course. I ain't tell a soul. Every motherfucking interview I did, I said, them niggas, my brothers, I love them niggas, whether I meant it or not. Now, you talking about full circle, we in 2023? Wallow has probably made me over $50,000. All no I can bullshit. say is to you from that one, Huh, he missed too? that one. He went you right too? over his head. You too. You heard what For I'm saying? Real? I heard what you said. Made you a fifty piece. Yeah, at you know least. Saying? And this at is least. from just and this is dropping the my name. This is the aftershock but, of it. But the, and, it, and we're gonna be all the way clear. He called and he cleared things up. You know what I mean? Like a man do. He righted wrongs. You know what I mean? And the thing about it was when he did call, you know. Wallow called. Wallow called, of course. Wallow my nigga. Yeah, Wallow's a solid, That's thorough nigga. That's my nigga right there. Wallow's a solid, thorough nigga. And it's like. No matter what. When he did call, and that, and that was this year, I think the beginning of this year or the end of last year, um, right at the wrongs, you can say what you want. But then to get a call and another call and another call with jobs, and I know it's him. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like. That's my brother now. That's my brother. Like, the, you know what I mean? Because you could say, I'm sorry, I'm not bad, da da da. Because that's the thing about it. And I want to clear this up. Somebody, you feel like, oh, you apology, oh, you something. And what niggas say now? Um, the, disre the respect got to equal the disrespect. So since you disrespect me on social media, you need to apologize on social media. You disrespect me on your album, you need to apologize on the album. No. I'm a real nigga. If you make that shit right, then it's just right. It ain't even a story to tell on it. It's just right. And that's why today it's like, yeah, that's my nigga. That's my brother. But if I hated and wanted to kill him, y'all wouldn't know that. I'm not, that, I'm not corny like that. And while I say, while I say, yo, you the only motherfucker we, I worked with and you ain't had nothing to say after you's a real bitch. And I said, that, that's, this is who I am. This, and this is years later. We worked together in because 2020. I'm going to tell you this, and I've said this shit before. I don't think I've put it on air. But I want, I want to share it. <clears throat> if you, let's just say, and I'm speaking in general, if you go, let's say you want to work for other companies, mm -hmm. you want to be a part of other bigger brands, yeah. you never bash the one that you left because uh. guess what? Those other companies are going to see how you leave. They're not going to see how you came. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck about that. Right. They're going to watch how you leave because a lot of times business can come to an end. Yeah, it's just a part of it. You know it. what I'm saying? It's a part of it, homie. Yeah. There's no need to get emotional. There's no need to go crazy and yeah. go haywire because it's going to it's gonna brand you a certain way. But this where you wrong. You can go crazy and haywire and all that, right? But do that shit on the back Put end. Put it in the Behind pillow. this fucking curtain. Put it in don't the pillow. Don't do that shit. Don't do that shit on Front Street because you know what it does? It makes an asshole out of everybody. Yeah. Put it on. That's the fuck it does. Put it in the pillow is a term, a jail term. You fucking go it. in your room yeah. and you fucking cry on your bunk. Late. You don't even want your sully to hear that shit. And then you wake up and you fucking shake it off. I ain't never cried in prison. I ain't never let no bitch see me weak. I ain't never crying for no fucking judge. But I've cried in the shower, nigga. You understand what I'm saying? And that's the difference. I'm a real nigga. It's men out here that will. Put prop the camera up and scream at the camera about another nigga fucking up your opportunity. You a man. You got fucking balls and you acting like this man stopped your bag. Man, I'd have ran that shit up so fast, I'm gonna knock that nigga in the head with my new bag before I'm gonna get online and cry. And by, and let's be, be let's be clear. A bitch was getting jobs before he made the call. But the call added ice into the fucking cake, and I appreciate it. I did uh Roots Picnic. Which is a huge pick in the Philadelphia every year. It's live. Wallow got on the stage and really spoke to me in front of a thousand people. Like, I love you. This is the real bitch. This is that bitch that you support. This is the one you show love. You understand what I'm saying? And they have turned that shit into a billion dollar brand. How can you hate on that? Me and me and some of his conversations have really uh he helps put some shit into perspective. I fuck with him. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he really rock with me. I ran into him uh, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. We was uh both shopping in the store in the wind. Mm -hmm. And while he had walked, I mean, he had said some funny shit. Man, who is this? And I turn around and it's him. Mm -hmm. he, he always a solid nigga. I think he always tries to keep the relationship good because he know 
Real motherfuckers know you still might have to run into that person what? one day. You can't always run from it. Like you're yeah. gonna run into people naturally. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. Yeah. It's all about the rapport that you hold. For sure. I feel like this was more of a podcast, me and you. Yeah. This is more like just a sharp thing, just podcast. It wasn't <laughs> even a fucking interview. Nah. Cause she because it, and why it's like that is because I'm sure people understand that she's a creator too. Yeah. So she creates as much as I create. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me and you being able to sit here and just chop it up and just bring real topics, I love that. And I think the fans and the viewers going to love that as well. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. up, man? You need to come down here. I'm coming. I'm moving. I, I ain't going for it. I'm a fearless kind of bitch, but LA is intimidating. You. If you, let me, I'm going to tell you this. You move down here. I got a job for I, you from Sharp and Scary. I got a, I got a job for you. It's, I, it might sound What kind real, of job, Sharp? All right, I got, let me re, let me retract this. Retract right, it, baby. Let, you let gotta me, say shit different. Over. Yeah. Let me start this one over real yeah. quick. All right, can we do a do over, Donnie? No, leave that do in. Just Donnie do it over. Combo. <laughs> now I'm not saying that. Like you come down here, I feel like me and you can do a show. Okay. That's gonna really fuck them up. Yeah. Tell us what you think in the comments. I think so too, though. I think so. I, I think know. I you, know so. Really. Me and you sitting down, like I said, ten years ago, girl, you'd have been in trouble. <laughs> good trouble. Good you've been, trouble. You've been in some good trouble 10 years ago, baby. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't been doing half none of this shit. I got a question, though. <laughs> for you, because I, I meant to ask you that the other day, but I didn't get a chance to. What's up? You being like, because you handsome, but you got like a, you could, you could go pretty boy easy. You could ch decide right now, I'm going to give up the pretty boy type of good boy, good college boy easy, little concealer on the face tag, and you could do it easy. You being like a pretty nigga, such a pretty nigga in your past life, did that cause you trouble with niggas think you pretty nigga, think you soft or you sweet or you easier to manipulate or easy to do something to because you pretty? I'm going to tell you this. That could have been your name. That could have been your name, pretty. No, I know the pretty. I got a cousin named Shout Pretty out, I Sibby. Two, God I got rest two homies, soul. big. I got, I got, listen, I got two homies. We call them the pretties. Big, big pretty and little, and pretty, little pretty and little pretty boy. You could have been medium pretty. Straight up. Like, no, this is my partners. They both hitters, though. Okay. They both with all, like, I'm but saying they both. But are they as pretty as you, honestly? With the or are they, I mean, excuse me, pause. No, do, are they as pretty as you? And they like skin nigga. I mean, I don't find anybody, man. <laughs> as pretty as this shit right motherfucking here. But in my heart, I'm going to be real with you. I think that's why I come off so stern is because it's like, when I was coming up, that shit didn't matter. Okay. So I kind of act like an ugly nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's because yeah. that shit didn't matter. It didn't matter what you looked like. It was about what you said and, you know, the 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 morale you kept for uh, yourself. You know, your character. it wasn't yeah, it wasn't money and it wasn't looks. Okay. It's about what you said yeah. and the knowledge that you had. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. I got taught young that, hey man, shit, a good looking face can only go so far. Mm-hmm. Right? But you understand what I'm saying. A good, but I'm saying a good looking face can only go so far, baby. Shit, we even teach the bitch that. Mm -hmm. Bitch, your face can only go so far. You're going to have to have some game that's going to have to come behind it. Mm -hmm. Don't let the ugly motherfuckers be the only ones that possess that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> My nigga know what I'm talking about, huh, for sure. <laughs> I got another question I wanted to ask you, too. What do you think about, because you know, originally when we got together, I wanted to introduce you to the fine hoe. My girl, shout out to the fine hoe. And they, she was like more of a renegade type vibe back in the day. What do you think about them renegades or even the girls now with the I don't whole... fuck with them. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why I don't fuck with them. It's because you have to think about it. <clears throat> it ain't like they're going to win. Y'all know what renegades are, hey, right? I'm, I'm going to say this. And this is girls to all the no renegades. Pigs. This is my camera right here. To all the renegades out there, let's be real. <laughs> let's really look at this shit logically, right? You want to have your cake and eat it too. You want to be a bitch that... Hoes at night, but still be able to come home to your man and he not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Bitch, that'll never be normal. That'll never that'll never happen. You might have it for a little while, but for how long? You're going to stay running through relationship after relationship because truly and genuinely, you're going for a square man. He's not going to accept you hoeing, selling your body, doing anything that you're doing to him, coming in at night from a long day shift or whatever the fuck it is, he come in, he expecting a hot plate, and what he finds you in there using a hot iron, mm -hmm. getting your hair together. Or waxing getting that ready, cat. Getting, getting ready to get outside. You know, how long does that really last? How for any for any like man, that? for any man, homie, when that pussy spell wears off, that fresh fuck wears off your dick, what happens then? 
shit starts to get normal. And I said it before. That's how you find these niggas with some of the craziest bitches. Like, damn, you really fucked her over me. She wasn't you. He, that's not his life. Mm -hmm. Think about it. It's not his life. Hell yeah, he went to some mediocre ass bitch. Yeah. That's what he knows. He doesn't know you. It doesn't matter how much money you're getting. Mm -hmm. Doesn't care about that. Yeah. They care about man time. He can't never take you home. A square, a genuine square man. How the fuck can he take you home to mama and daddy and really present you? Because mm. they gonna want to get all in your business. Mm. They gonna want to get all in your business. Who is this marrying my son well, or being with my son? He ain't worked for the last five years. You don't have yeah, no what's job. Going How you take they care of yourself? Raise suspicion. They fucking are. Yeah. Okay. Would you ever wife a stripper, or even if you're a close friend, wife the stripper? What do you think about that? The niggas that like that that's they bitch, but that's they lame. Bottle girl, stripper. They work places where they have to put thongs hey, on. Hey, you know, I used to say something about it, but now I'ma say, you know, my man Silky Slim, he had told me something. He said, man, shit, it just gotta make sense. Okay. If it can make sense and it's taking care of business, hey man, more power to it. Okay. Cause you gotta think about it too, man. These days, man, not every bitch a hoe. Yeah. Don't mean she don't want to give you the bag. Yeah. She might have it up. What am I supposed to do? Turn down this 400000 because she didn't hold for it? Nigga, shit, I'm taking that shit, nigga. Yeah. On pimping. Yeah. Could I'm you taking ever, that shit, nigga. Could you ever see yourself I'm taking selling? that shit. You want to ask, you want me to open up to it? I'm telling you, nigga. I'm taking it. <laughs> and hell, at least I know, nigga, I ain't got nobody looking for it. You got light eyes sharp. Yeah. You handsome. Thank you, baby. Listen, so. I appreciate you. You, you just want to butter me up. You want to know you handsome. I, I think you handsome. You think I'm handsome, baby. I think you handsome. 10 years ago, I would have had you on whatever oh. boat I would have wanted to have what you I on. What did I tell you? I told you. Could we say 10 years ago, I would have had you on any boat I would have wanted to have you on? Mm. Yeah. Let me think. If you're going to listen, listen. Don't say you ain't speak. Yeah, man, it's not too much. It'd have been hard for ago. you 10 years ago. No, it'd have been hard for you. Because you would have been trying to figure out every motherfucking day how can I truly, genuinely, 100% have this nigga? Every bitch always want to have they nigga under their thumb some type of way, whether mm -hmm. it's some pussy, whether it's knowing a nigga's secrets, knowing about a nigga, and when a nigga getting ready to leave you, you want to bust out all the cards on a nigga, don't you? <laughs> no, I ain't one of them. All the receipts. I ain't one of them. I ain't all doing the receipts, like that. Bitch, I've been like written, ripped all them motherfuckers up. The numbers don't even match. So when you try to sit there and bring all that shit to the courts, hey, man, they're going to be like, well, none of these numbers go together. I'm going to be sitting there looking at you like this. I have never, <laughs> honestly, in my relationships, like, I never really, I, I I, probably gave my heart up probably once, and it was horrible. I don't think I could do it again. I couldn't be in a relationship where I, like, really liked the nigga. I came up with, you fuck with the guys that like you, not the Donnie, guys that you like. Have you, Donnie, have you ever been with a bitch that you didn't really like, but you, like, kind of gained something out of the situation, so you stuck with her? Uh, yeah. Just in your time, like, a couple of You know, got to ask a guy who's had some... Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for real, just having, like, just a chick that you was like, man, I don't really fuck with her, but she always be having some weed, bro. The perks so that come with her, there. yeah. Yeah, I'm going over there, bro. She going to smoke me out, my nigga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, with, me, <laughs> with me, every relationship, it was yeah. a goal in it. Even when I started dating Squares, it was like, oh, he works here, got a 401k, it'd be good for the kids. When I finally fucked with a nigga that I liked, Boy, it was like putting sneakers in the washing machine. You ever heard sneakers in the dryer? That was my life. The whole bop, 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 bop. Lord. No bullshit. Nigga had me she listening to Chief Keef. I fucked up. Back. People make mistakes, but you're supposed to, ladies at home, you supposed to date the nigga that likes you a lot, not the nigga that you like. You don't date sharp. No. You date the nigga with one eye and the limp. Or you date the nigga that always liked you from high school. Or you date the guy that's not that cool, but he I got a good job. Go. The first time I buried I the nigga that I dated, I stopped doing it because it's like, and then plus I was a street bitch, so it's like if I go to jail, who gonna bail me out? We both locked up, so I start fucking with squares, and that was kind of that ain't really going that well bitches, for me but either. You gotta think about it. A lot of bitches can't think past <clears throat> some good dick. Pause. Oh no, like for real, like no. a lot of bitches can't think past that. Like they, but that shit fucks you up sharp. The first time I got a piece of good dick, I was over thirty. Like. Listen, yeah, why you being weird to me? That's how it happened. <laughs> why you being weird to me? That came was one out. of my favorite segments yeah. on you, like, yeah. and you put the little uh, mustache. mustache, little yeah. joint on, yeah. and she over here on the bed, like nigga, mm -hmm. showing how it was happening. Mm -hmm. It looked like they was doing the twisted monkey. Listen. What the fuck is the Twisted Monkey? You know, I just found out what it was, and it looked kind of like what you had tried to portray in that video. 
Okay. It's basically the, the the whole neck on the frontal is basically it's a you get because first of all I like little dick. So this is a little dick holder. So you little dick niggas at home, don't lose all faith. It's the motion in the, in the ocean. Don't lose all the faith. The best dick I got in my life was a six and a half or you feel me? Seven, six and a half type Ooh. vibe. It's not that deep. But it's the balance. You he put the leg up. So he can have a certain amount of a balance, and then he got your legs a certain way. So he's in control of the whole back shot. Then he'll grab your motherfucking head around your frontal area, pull that bitch back right to where it's uncomfortable, and he grab your neck, give it two pumps. Uh -uh. It's over. <laughs> That's when a nigga get the. Nut, I want to marry what the you. Fuck? <laughs> put this car in your name. Yeah. Help me put this mixtape out. You like, all right, bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the three digits on the back of your debit? Five, six, seven. I'm coming. No bullshit. I never had good dick ever till I was like 31, 30. Nigga, wore me out. I'm talking about, because that's the thing about us women, and that's the thing about girls that's in that industry that I kind of don't get. Us as females, like just as a, like a human, we naturally, we put out certain hormones after we had sex. It's things inside of us chemically that makes us want to lay up and cuddle. It's an automatic. After a woman has sex, especially if she orgasms, she's putting out all this energy. It's like we're naturally wanting to cuddle and be loved. That's why these bitches act like savages that fuck three niggas a night. You want me to believe that you're not hurt? Shaquita. You crying in that pillow. Who sell them taco plates? If you not on high, side, now, now if you getting high and all that, maybe you can ignore your feelings for an amount of time. But just us as females, we long for that loving kind of thing. So it's like, y'all young, especially you young girls, y'all bouncing around trying to prove to the nigga that you really love, that you don't give a fuck by fucking three niggas a day. Meanwhile, he don't give a shit what you doing for real and you just wearing that cat out. It's a waste of time. I got my first piece of dick around 30 something. I would never do it again. Give me a motherfucker that don't even get hard. I don't even want it. You know why that Because that shit right? fucked my head up. It I ain't gonna hold a nigga up. had me no, tripping. No, for real. Had her tripping. Had like me really, tripping. Used to really make me come every shit. day. I wasn't used to that shit. I made my own self come. Had sex with my man and then go make myself come. That was a very normal thing for me. And it's normal for a lot of women. Most women are not getting good dick. Like the guys that, most of the guys that can fuck, are fucking losers. These niggas be homeless. Like, I'm talking about these niggas is hobo sexuals. They need a place to stay. This motherfucker got a bin at everybody's house. He got a bin everywhere. Just a bin, because he knows it's time to go. All I gotta do is put my PlayStation on the top of this shit and I'm leaving. You understand what I'm saying? And it's crazy because my thank God mine wasn't a bum at the, you know, at the time he wasn't bummed out. He had a couple dollars. Cause you know I fell for the uh PUA special. What? A lot of us did. Don't you bitches lie about that EDD PUA? You met that nigga get EDD, thought he was rich. Yeah. You ain't see that rely card in his motherfucking back pocket, Ooh. bitch. When them funds ran was out, the fantasy draft. Woo! That's what I call it. I Man, thought I had a draft. winner, Who winner, chicken dinner. All fantasy. A sharp. I, he got fifty. I know he don't really be having that. You gotta really look at it. A sharp. Them funds ran out. Niggas got the looking out the window, gazing that shit. What's wrong, babe? What's wrong? Boy, that money dried up. Boy, I know you bitches was getting knocked upside your motherfucking head, boy. And ain't nothing, don't, don't nothing fucking nigga a day up more than being a fucking loser and not having no money. Men don't do, especially black men, they don't do well with not having nothing. And they'll start projecting that shit against you the whole time. I'm thinking you rich, motherfucker. I feel like this. Nigga got to know that's not a wrong mentality, though. Even if a nigga is broke, you got to still have a rich nigga mentality because you can still get there. It's okay. See, I, I would rather, hey, if I was you, I'd rather have a nigga that's like that, that's still self, like still driven. Like, even if he might be fucking the money up, the nigga's still trying to make plays. I definitely he respect a nigga that's trying to drink trying. it up, smoke it up. The nigga don't never leave. Like, you got to at least respect it. Like, look, man, he, gotta, he might have a different play every week. 80% of the shit might not even fall through. But one of them might, and but that might be the one. One of them might fall through, and it might be that one. I just feel like, man, the bitch need to really know how to stand behind her man. Yeah. Stand behind him, stand with him, and stand for him. But we ain't talking about that, show. We talking about them niggas ain't never had shit in some kind of way. A lot of niggas way. haven't. Welcome to the race. No, wait, listen. I'm talking about, we talking about a nigga that ain't never had I shit. I ain't had shit. That ain't never really had no drive. That ain't never had no hustle for real. Hey. Bucked well, up on part, a fucking car. Well, that part, I got to tell a nigga to pick a struggle. <laughs> you can't just have. You got to pick a struggle, man. You can't just have everything fucked up. Listen, ain't never had shit. 
did a little, you know, got did a <laughs> little capping you. on social media, then got that fucking card with twenty, thirty thousand dollars on it, and then when it went, it twinkled down. Lord, do you know that they had the nerve to reload the motherfuckers? So them niggas had a good ten month stretch of pretending to be rich, and it looked like it because this nigga in Miami every every weekend got the big sneaks on with the designer belt. When them niggas stop getting money because them rely card, boy, you talking about robbery? Every old lady in the neighborhood got you know, robbed. Uh, you know, I never did that shit. I never got the EDD. I, I bet got, you did. Nope. I got twelve nigga, I got twelve hundred dollars the first time. On a stimulus. And nigga, they had tried to send it to my baby mama one time because we had filed taxes. Oh, and nigga, they tried shit. to send it to her account because nigga, I ain't keep no accounts at the time. Yeah. That's how I am, nigga. I lived off the grid. Yeah. For, for many, real. For many yeah. years, my nigga. So did I, sure. So I know I, I knew how to move everything through the bitch. Mm -hmm. Like, nigga, yeah, <laughs> this shit gonna hit. Yeah, this shit all gonna hit. Just so happened I wasn't fucking with the bitch when the shit hit. She and tried she to got make your a, damn stimulus. She tried to make it complicated for a nigga. Tried to be like, yeah, well, I'm gonna write you this check. You know this check ain't cashing for eight days. <laughs> Nigga, you know this cat. Like, and I ain't there's nothing but love to them. I'm just yeah, talking we love shit. The baby but mamas. I, I'm just talking shit. But in all actuality, like, yeah, no, she really wrote me a check. She wouldn't even give me cash. That's deep. I said, damn. That's deep. I said, it's hard. It's hard. Most <laughs> niggas ain't get that stimulus because of child support anyway. That though. shit was fucked up. Yeah. That shit was fucked up. I was <laughs> like, damn, that's shit. what we on. And she, and, tears. and she had her new nigga walk out to give it to me. No, she didn't. I swear to God. No, she didn't. <laughs> I don't be hurt about shit. I just find the funnies in it. Like yeah. it don't bother me. She was you know trying to saying? hurt you with that, but one, it don't, homie. See, because and why I bring shit up like that is because it just lets it lets niggas know. Hey, man, every nigga that gotta face adversity or something that may change, I'm open to that. That's why I'm open to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, nigga, you go. It's real life. You go. It's real life, nigga. It's gonna happen to everybody. Yeah. It's just. It, it's not. It, 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 it's how much you can take, man. Listen, you got to get that part of you up. Listen, before but you, you niggas, can sit there and try to give. But you niggas to that sitting home still with that old designer belt because you sold the rest of them and all us the bad big sneaks, we not getting no more money. Cut that rely card right now. Go in your wallet and cut that rely card out. It's the free money lane is over. Yeah. You got to think niggas like us. We've never even seen that much free money on the street. It's never happened in our I whole never, lifetime. I, I only bought it up because I was like, man, I only touched twelve hundred dollars of that shit. They yeah, never gave me nothing boy. else. I never filed. I never filed for nothing. I never got nothing. Like I just kept it moving, man. And Listen, you know what's so cold? What? That's when God blessed me and put me on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like that was the. The grand finale of it for yeah, me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because he put me on, man. Shit, I was just living out the streets. Yeah. What year did you do Soft cool. Belly? What year was that? I want to say 2020. 2020. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Part two was 2022. It was the same. It was year? probably like yeah, I think so. It was like six, maybe six, seven months later. I don't know what I did. I want to ask you about seven another viral later. clip of mine. I don't know if you ever see it, but I got Adidas bucket head on, and I'm saying, stop calling your brothers and your sis your brothers every time you get in the shit. Um, the game ended up calling me. He used it on his album. Um, the album that just dropped. Um, yeah, you heard me. The game put me on his album. I made a lot of albums last year. I was on Jasmine's yeah. album, album. Money Bag Yo put me in his video, obviously. And I mean, how did that work out? You know, I was at the BET Awards. Mm -hmm. You know what you be doing. I like that shit, though. That's why I be wanting you for calls. Hey, I, no, I saw Money Bag Yo. Um, I'm talking to everybody. Everybody moving, man. I know it's a fast mixture, but my voice raspy. Yeah, mine too. And, and I made <laughs> sure when I saw it, bro, because he came over. He was. They were talking to probably like they were talking like two, two strips down, like two uh, media companies down. Like we're all in here, here in range. And I saw that he had dropped. He had put uh, the clip of me and Carmen Karma in. One of his music videos, recent music videos, uh -huh. you know, and the shit was going up. He was talking about because the girl was, uh, it was Carmen Karma, and she was talking about that she would pay Moneybag Yo 100K to fuck her. Right, I remember well, that. Well, he was, he had in the video to where he was wa looking like he was watching it, and he was pretty much saying, like, 100K. You gonna have to pay more than that, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, Pretty right. much, you yeah, know. Put, you put your shit in the but, song, but but nonetheless, like you put the shit in the song. I see the nigga. That's all I wanted to talk to him about was like, hey man, that shit was that was fly, man. Do your thing. So how'd that go, man? I said, hey, money bag, and I know my voice is raspy, man. Uh -huh. I speak up loud, right? That's how I am, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm real like that. Everybody yeah. moving around me, we moving. Yeah, money bag, man, nigga. 
kept it moving. Whoa, he looked at you and kept it moving? Kept it moving, man, he ain't wanna look that way. That's deep. This is the crazy part, this is gonna fuck your head up, Lord. Moneybag just dropped a song, well, I don't know, what is it called? You know what it's called? The track, the tight, the, uh, the uh, track? Whatever the song is, in the chorus of the song, right? He says, why you something, something, why you being weird to me? That's mine. Now, people didn't tell me from right to left that I did not come up with weird or being weird. Now, look, in the, on the East Coast, we say weird as a, um, as a diss almost. You're a weirdo. He being weird. We might call something weird that's not weird, but the fact that it happened is just like that. Him ignoring you is weird as shit. To a Philly person, that's how we talk. You feel me? So when I say, why you being weird to me, it has to be mine because you wouldn't use that in that type of sentence. You wouldn't say weird to me in that way. You know what I'm saying? That's why why you being weird to me is mine. That's July of 2021. That's mine. It's the most viral video I ever did. And I thought he was respecting it because shit, I kept it real for the nigga, man. When this little dumbass bitch sitting up over here on the couch and saying a little weird shit she's saying, shit, nigga, I still stood up for the culture and stood up for us. As real niggas, like, okay, well, shit, hey, church, shit ever go down and shit ever get fucked up, and nigga, because we all go through that sometimes, it can happen to anybody. Uh, nigga, that 100K gonna look real motherfucking good tomorrow. So I made sure that, you know, if you, you ever need something in your pocket, church, not saying that you do, I'm not saying that you're hurting, but let's keep it real as real niggas, man. Because, nigga, we all get there sometimes, nigga, where a nigga can use $100. I'm taking 100 bands to fuck. Is this if anybody had the nigga, idea? Nigga, use $100. You can fuck me today for $100,000. Let's not get it fucked up. I won't say anything. We can sign on done disclosures. And, and, I'm, and, I'm home. Sure, and I'm sure it's a money bag, Kate man. Phelps, hey, no disrespect to you, loved one. It's nothing but love, my nigga, peace and prosperity. But, nigga, I'm sure there was a time in your life where, nigga, sometime, I don't give a fuck you as a kid, nigga, you could have used $100. It, fuck all that. It's corny so not to speak. That's corny. But, that's that's what we saying. When I seen him, mind you, money back dates a friend of mine. Ari's my friend. I don't know him through her. Like I've never, you know, met him or anything. This chick was standing right there doing rap TV, nigga, and I didn't even say nothing to her out of respect. But I ain't say nothing, nigga, out of respect, and I ain't even see the nigga yet. I, his girlfriend is my friend, but when we first started being friends, I don't even think they dated. If they did, it wasn't public. You know what I mean? Plus, I'm not that kind of person. I'm that like how he is. So I don't. If I meet my man friends, I don't look them in the eye. I don't look at them. If I meet my friend's man, I don't engage the conversation unless he starts it or she sparks it or whatever. But I saw him coming with a big entourage, and I was walking out that door, and I walked right in the middle of all of them, and I was like, money bag, what's up? And he, I think he might have said, I don't know. Whatever it was, was like, get the fuck out of my face. And I know I wasn't tripping because when I turned around, all my niggas' faces was twisted up. So I say to him, oh, that why you being weird to me? That's me. But when I think about it, one thing I learned a long time ago about the internet, especially if you view chases, we've been dropping jewels the whole pod, the whole podcast. I keep so y'all can know we dropping a jewel, but just in general, when you see your views, let's say you get a hundred views on something, you might as well call it two hundred because when we see stuff, we go, you see that shit. So usually, if it's two people, both of them people seeing your shit. So it's like being that he is in a relationship with somebody that thinks I'm hilarious. I know you seen me. I know you know that's mine. What's the big deal with speaking? Like, that's crazy. But I don't know. If I um were to be in the same, like, vicinity of him again, I would say the same shit. And I would say, you didn't speak when I saw you or whatever. But I, I try to be a realist about shit. Like, it's a lot going on or whatever. But if we lock eyes and you give Maybe me you the right you here. smell like shit face, then you hey, just don't want to talk to me. That's corny and shit. Like, in that situation, I just got done. Uh, talking to Finesse two times. That's my nigga. Mm -hmm. That was a real solid I'll nigga, homie. He stopped by. He fucked with a nigga. I I'll know fuck with his music. he fucked with Money Bag. Yo, they about to get ready to go on tour. Shout out to they tour. Shit like that that's about to even really go, go on, man, for them, man. I commend them and respect them. But for you to come up, man, shit, you see Finesse there, man, shit, you uh, wrapped your arms around him, everything. I said, hey, man, Money Bag. Hey, man. Yeah. Nothing. And, that, and that's cool, Church. I don't want your day. money. I don't really got to smoke a joint with you. But nigga, if you're going to use my shit, hey, Church, be a real nigga and just acknowledge it. Nigga, shit, we, you ain't got to put it on camera. Like you said, he ain't got to do nothing but shit, man. Send a nigga a text and say, hey, <clears throat> I know what I know. I know how to catch a telegram. It's cool. And it ain't got to go. <laughs> it ain't got to go to nobody else. I'm a real one about it, man. Like, but shit, and be like, yeah, I thing. didn't use that. Did you hear what Laura said in the beginning? Like, we got to. I don't know how much you've experienced, but 
when I got on why you being when I did the why you being weird to me thing, right? On Twitter, they tweeted me, tweeted me like October. That came out July. They tweeted me on October. Or some month after that time. When was the Sony thing? We had to chase Sony down for the money. Uh, September, October. How was that? Fucking with Sony. <laughs> I was acting like a gold gorilla. I don't know. They probably don't never call me again. October. So they tweet me October, right? Um, and this is important that you know about the apps. Pay attention, content creators. You got Twitter, you got Facebook, you got Instagram, you got TikTok, you got Snapchat, right? It's this is why webs. you can't miss Twitter. You can't. A lot of people overlook Twitter, especially when I talk. It's like me and you come from the same thing. We wasn't on the internet like that before it made us money. So some mm -hmm. of this stuff is brand new. Plus, we street people, so it's like, do I want to call a made lawyer? Me make a fucking Twitter. I ain't gonna lie. You have like, to have a Twitter Laura, chart. Like, I'm, I'm gonna be you honest. Like, just no, no bullshit. No, like throwing her roses. Fuck all that. Like, she really did give me the game. Like, nah, nigga. You got to have a Twitter. Bro, like, it doesn't and listen, matter what's even going though on. you made him a Twitter, I guarantee you it's some clip in the corner of Twitter with 500,000 views, a million views, and it's him talking. And we would never know. You know what I mean? And in that thread, it could be all motherfuckers from the UK. Everybody just got introduced to Sharp. So it's cool, but it would be great if you motherfuckers would tag people sometime. But whatever. So being that we in that, because the thing about it is at the end of the day, Sharp, most people that do what we doing, they are sitting in the house trying to figure out what to say cool. They think about some cool shit on Wednesday. They don't even film till next Tuesday and they remember it. These motherfuckers ain't got personalities. They don't have no swag. They don't have no creativity. They don't have no brain. They don't have no spirit or soul. So for the most part, 2023, everybody sees something and they redo it. The biggest TikTok people right now, they got millions of uh, followers and views. The ones that got all the branding deals, almost every fucking video they got is somebody else's. Laura, my mom got a TikTok. I had to delete it because she was cussing the motherfuckers out. They doing your shit and they ain't saying your name. She ain't even understand it. It's like Demona, I've watched a million people today use your voice and not say your name. They don't even write your name in the box, Demona. In the comments of all the posts, you're going to see a page with one follower on it. That's my mother cussing y'all out. My mom mad about that shit. That's <laughs> our money. Send that fucking money. But in October, they tweet me, tweet me, tweet me, right? How does it feel to be on the biggest album that came out today? So I knew nothing came out. I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? So I had their research. There's a guy named Hetty One. Shout out to Hetty One with your fine ass. We friends now. But he's huge in the UK. His album got a Drake feature on it. And smack dab in the middle of it is my voice for fucking a minute and 20 seconds. That motherfucker ain't called me, follow me, look at me, nothing. And those UK bitches that are fans of mine, shout out to y'all. I love y'all. They like, Damona, you're on this album. What's up? So when I called Sony, it's like, yo, I'm on the album. What's up? Yeah. And it was that easy. They sent me. I, I was paid within three days. We and and they said, hello, cheers. Excuse me. Hetty told me to, because I got, listen, he tweeted me. I tweeted him. They said, how does it feel to be a great album? And then there was other tweets. I found that one, quoted it, and put, as a black woman with kids, a single mother, it feels good, but it would have feel better if somebody, and he had to respond. He said, I've been looking for you. I said, well, cheers. Cheers, mate. He yeah. said, go ahead and call Sony. We're going to yeah. handle everything. And, and then run that motherfucking everything. bag. Bring that money. But then you got a nigga like the game. The game called, said, can I put it on my album? He said, I ain't giving you no money, but I will put your name under it. And I said, yes. You know why, Laura? Because I fucking came up off the documentary. That nigga, like I was a fan of that. I'm a, I'm a hip hop head first. So it's like. Yeah, you could put me on your fucking album some so place, I can say you I'm on. Know how to make, yeah, some place Come you gotta on. know how to just make the play. And he was willing to put to my name play. so now everybody know that's me. I'm on track 16. What we going to do? But um, that clip went viral. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Um, oh, yeah, reverse. That's why you use Twitter. Twitter connected me with the UK that fast. That wouldn't have happened on any other app. Fast forward. Um, the clip, I say, stop calling your brothers when you get in the shit in the street. You, you you get into something at the gas station with a nigga, you feel disrespected, you call your cousin, and these niggas beefing all summer about it. Them bodies is on you. Them lives are, that's on you. Some people call me and pick me, but I stand on my statement. Being from North Philly, being from the hood, I've seen real live wars start with 20 people dead over a nigga little sister walked to the store and somebody said something to her and it was out of, niggas don't clear shit up and rumble. This ain't 67. You got the box bullets now. Don't know. This the most, this generation right now, these niggas that's like 13 to probably 23, 24, they don't, yeah. they never been in fights. Not one. 
But I be seeing Not these one. niggas with poles bigger than their lives. What? I be like, nigga, beams, they know what it all is. Get the switch on it, everything. Bro. Instead of figuring out, hey, my nigga, if a nigga got a problem with you, homie, just handle that shit. Bro. I don't give a fuck how a nigga handle their business. I just don't like how niggas put that shit on the internet. You get to woofing before anything even happened. You creating problems That's they lane. for nothing. That's they lane. With these young niggas, it's all a part of the same thing. Your body's count for points type of person you is. Like, right now, you can have $37 in your cash app and $100 in your pocket. But if you got five bodies in your area, you are the fucking man. That's how it is right now. We we came up off niggas respected that had bread. Niggas mm -hmm. respected that ran a nice little operation, whatever they was doing. They had cash, they had paper. Now, niggas respect niggas that kill niggas, that period. Don't, yeah, it don't matter. It's not about bread no more. You have to understand that the money doesn't fucking matter. It's about the people who want fame. They want notoriety. They want a certain type of respect that I don't even think is worth gaining. Like, that shit ain't worth shit. Yo, it's just a different time. Like, and this is the crazier part. Niggas a tweet, yeah, I just caught that nigga on 65th or I'm going to catch, I'm going to be on and go kill the nigga on 65th and then that's that. Yo, when that nigga did that King Von documentary, that's all he used was tweets. Von was that heavy on Twitter. I think that was a uh, Trap Lord yeah, Ross. Yeah, the one with correct? the small head, the funny looking one, Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, Trap Lord Ross did that. But um, not a huge fan of Trap Lord Ross. Just don't like it. Some no, of this culture vulture shit it. irritates that, me. I don't, I don't fuck with that because I feel like Trap Lord Ross is just another fucking fan watching from behind the scenes and he took something and he capitalized off mm -hmm. of it. I'm not with, especially something that ain't even got nothing to do with him. Yo, you not that even nigga ain't from never here. Even been, he ain't never even been through even a piece of that shit. Bro, they gang, they gangsters over there. Why don't he fuck with them niggas over there? Them niggas be street niggas Trap over there. Ross, man. Hey, I'm gonna be real with you, nigga. Shame on you, nigga. Shame on you, bitch you ass nigga. Cause I'm gonna be real. Fuck you you might have to be real. He went down some whole shit because if you really look at the shit. He's a whore, nigga. You, you, you put some shit together that you really don't don't even know nothing really about. You don't know shit, nigga. You gathered all your information off a of line. And some niggas that claim they knew, like you try to paint Vaughn nigga as like any of his demon. people spoke up. Yeah, his people Twitter spoke finger up and was ass like, nigga. hey, homie, that wasn't even his friends was like, damn, my nigga, like you're really putting extras. You're looking at a 14-year-old nigga tweets. Bitch ass nigga, do some. You want to be a fucking journalist with your wet ass mouth? He always flock, 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 ball ass spit. He's nasty. And I know he's not getting what fucked you think? over what there. You think me and, uh, Think me, you, Trap Lord Ross should sit down? Yeah, but it's gonna be a Kelpie situation. I might yeah. swing on that nigga. I might got the two piece that bitch ass hey. nigga. I really, Donnie, I don't like that nigga. <laughs> I don't like that nigga. <laughs> He's not an Amer he's not American. Hey, get, I don't want to carry it like that. Can we get Trap Lord Ross on the phone? Listen, let's call that can, bitch uh, ass nigga because I got a question. A, let's see if we can get a phone call real quick from Trevor or Ross. For like, I don't get that shit. And it's like, we just let these niggas do that. Even academics, I feel like at the end of the day, right? I don't fuck with that nigga. That nigga don't fuck with me. Like, it is cool. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I'm going to keep it real, nigga. Did he still... pay you? Because no, I watched. Never, Did he pay nigga, you? No, he never paid me. That's wild. And I'm still in the build, nigga. And I'm still moving. And I ain't had no problems from, nigga, what you would call the higher-ups, nigga. They never questioned anything, nigga. I got into it with you about punk. So if you, real, <laughs> so if you really got a real problem with me, homie, I'm just saying, just give me my 100 bands. Because I pay the men, bro. You, if I would have lost, that nigga would have wanted his bread and I would have never heard yeah, any of that shit. Yeah. But because it's sharp. And every, that's how I know. Motherfuckers don't even stand on street more on now principle. Stand I on get it. a nigga's a civilian, but when a nigga playing street games, that shit's a problem. I'm about to nigga. say, how you gonna stand on I'm principle? I'm not cool with that shit. What principle? One thing I'm I know. I'm not cool with that shit. I don't got nothing to say about Buddy or like trying to like move him in no bag, hey man. Shout out to your podcast or whatever the fuck it is you call yourself doing. Hey man, but don't come playing nigga tactics because you might lose in the end, homie. That's all I'm saying, bro. I would never talk to this man about nothing that I don't know is facts. Yeah. Why would I? Mm -hmm. That's fucking asinine. You That's don't even fucking know. dumb. I don't even know this nigga. Yeah. Don't give a fuck to know him. It was cool. I ain't got no problems. Nigga always want to keep jabbing and yeah. think that shit's cool to jab, jab, jab. Yeah. Stab, stab, stab. Well, my nigga, I'm going to shoot, 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 nigga. No, wait, 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 pause, pause, pause. So listen. I don't mean that in no volatile way. I'm just saying that's how I came at him. He snapped right. at me. I snapped back. Yeah, but this the thing, though. One thing I noticed is I fuck even- fuck with that nigga? You do. We can't do business. Bro, first of all, I got two different videos 
where I'm, because I was so mad about the fresh fit thing. This is the thing, my problem with academics was, it kept being these clips would come out where he's super dumb aggressive with a female and not a male. And it was blowing my shit, because it's like, the one girl pulled the pistol on him and they was looking at her like she's so crazy. No, I'm a female, you're a fat ass man, You're I can't beat you, so I'ma pop you, nigga. Even though that girl did a lot of wild what shit. What you think about me snapping on bitches? This the thing about you. These girls step into the Terra Dome and then they be real easy on the like dippy shit. And I don't know why. You understand know what I'm saying? I feel like you got to know your circumstance of what's going on. I don't necessarily think you snapping. I think you're real passionate. So you want, I think half the videos, five minutes after, you're cool because you don't give a fuck. It's not about that. It's when you're in the moment and you saying this bullshit to me and I'm supposed to just take it because you got new titties or a new. And ad. I'm in hopes to get some pussy from you. I'm not in need <laughs> of pussy. That's why a lot of people don't understand that. Well, I would never talk to her like that. Well, I would. Because the ones I've seen bad ones that understand what I'm saying. Hell, it was bad ones that taught me. Mm -hmm. That's what they fail to fucking realize. They ought to been around some real bad bitches, man. Mm -hmm. So they the ones that done taught me the shit. So who's really to blame here? The nigga or the bitch? Most of them girls <laughs> is used to using their body Let's or they pussy. Real shit, Laura. Most of them girls are used to, and I'm not what? judging them or shading them, but they used to using their what? bodies and you know that sexualness to like get what they want, even in conversation. Me and I'm snapping now. All of a sudden, I'm suspect. They be calling victim. you gay or something. I'm saying, yeah, you must not like bitches. Man, I love bitches. I love pussy, nigga. I just don't like you bums with crumbs. And you can't sit there and make me today, tomorrow, or next week, next year accept some shit like that. Mm -hmm. I'm cool. I'm not hurting. I'm not sitting here waiting like nigga I ain't busting a nut nigga in fucking 64 days like the fucking Incredible Hulks had an incident. Yeah. Nigga I'm not sitting holding back like I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm content with my life and who I am. I've had to be this all my life. It ain't never stopped me from moving a bitch today or tomorrow. Listen. In the next two seconds, nigga, it ain't never stopped me. So these niggas can stop it. Just don't be mad because you're not fast. For the niggas that are not fast, get fast. Gym, nigga. Listen. PE, nigga. So listen, Middle school. The back back to the um academics thing. When y'all was going back and forth, because you know I watch now. I'm on all your shit. I watch all your stuff. When y'all was going back and forth and he started talking, well, I watched something that he said and I never do that, so I blame you for that because I had to see the comeback because I seen what you said. So it was really your fault that I gave him a view if you really think about it because I wouldn't even been looking if you wouldn't have went back and forth with this man. But you said that, I mean, he said, if I wasn't doing this, I would be working, like basically using his degree because he has a degree and he went to school or whatever. But that's my whole thing. Why the fuck? Do we allow these motherfuckers that don't know nothing about the streets? I'm talking about, you know that cool cousin, you could take him to the trenches and he just know how to blend in. Even though he is square, he a dweeb. He's not you even them niggas. Then wait a minute, say. them the niggas, listen, them the niggas that you can't even pull up and say, yo, grab the A from a grab the A. He don't even know how to do a drug transaction. You know what I mean? Just a full fucking square, a real dweeb. <laughs> we let real dweebs. That wouldn't even jump out the car to cop a fucking eighth. If they made beer illegal, they would have a hard time getting it. They'd be the nigga paying $30 for a can <laughs> of beer because they fucking don't know nothing. We gorillas. Like, once you survive the street and you don't rat, you're not dead. I ain't got that fucked up limp or ain't put me in no chair, nigga. I'm a gorilla. You feel what I'm saying? I'm better than you because I survived that shit, period. And the thing about street people is we have knowledge that you can't just go get a degree in. You have a degree in whatever you want. You can't learn this shit I know. And I damn near can't even fucking teach it. You know what I'm saying? That look down, that whole like, mm, they're thugs, they have criminal records. That's why you can't be in this culture reporting on it. That's why <laughs> academics shouldn't have been the, the, the person reporting on all the Chicago shit. Because he ain't from 63rd. Like, he don't know shit about shit, but we let these people come in the culture and talk shit. Look at the people we talked about, Gil and Wallow. Gil locked the fuck up, doors kicked in over some motherfucking weed. Him and his bitch went to jail. And she was a square, and he opened her fucking mouth, ain't tell. This lady's a makeup artist. You understand what I'm saying? Fucking Wallow, do a dub for robbery. Like, these motherfuckers is talking street shit, teaching street lessons, because they walked on them streets. We let people that's really, like, in the culture, that don't have Vlad, academics, Trap lore, I don't understand how they're allowed to do that shit. I don't get it. Shit, lightweight Adam. 
Like, I don't get how the white boys could just come in and do that. I do know why. Because this is a white man's world. A white man can do what the fuck he want. A white man right now can come out as a drill rapper, put goals in no. his mouth. The nigga might you go up. You know what? If you're gonna push the if you're gonna push the narrative, I'm gonna push, I'm a, I'm and let's be real about it, right? And it ain't even about the names that you named off. It's really about you ever notice a nigga will show up early to his job for the white man, but will show up late for a nigga that he know. Mm. It's a difference. So who's really at fault? We can't blame the white man. I can't blame the white man because I see our niggas do each other. We don't even show. We don't show up early for niggas. I, it's we never, don't do none of that shit. Sharp. It's but never we always a show up the early for them. But we we can't even blame. You know what? If we, I can understand we were showing up early for both, but we not. It's never been a blame the white man for me. In my opinion, it's just always been. I I hate the fact that we just supposed to ignore certain shit. I don't think people understand the effect. And I, I know y'all gonna be like. Ugh. But the effects of slavery, bro, that shit has effects that that are going to be for our grandkids. Facts. Facts. Things that happen in this country, slavery, Jim Crow, segregation, all that shit. Like, I just read randomly, like, the history of lynching. It started in St. Louis, first person to get lynched. Like, bro, they used to come all out the whole town to watch niggas lynch a 13-year-old boy. To watch. They would come out to watch a 13-year-old boy and his father get... They used to make them postcards. When you zoom in, the motherfuckers crackers like this. Demons. I don't give a fuck. And they run everything. So yeah, I'm gonna talk my shit. God help me with that. Cause it's what? white Muslims, and that mean you my brother, but I don't care. I'm talking about what it is. They run shit. I got my son, listen, my son is eight years old. My son's favorite kind of music is classical music. My son thought he was gay at five because he liked bow ties. The motherfucker walked in, I gotta tell you something, mommy. I said, what's wrong? He said, I'm gay. His sister in the corner cackling. What the fuck's so funny? He think he gay because he like fashion. Like, it's just, he's talks, he, hello, very proper. Hi, mommy. Real intelligent, right? I still have to teach him how to behave around police because they might kill him. I got to tell him, you talk real nice, you talk real slow, you give him what you want, but you be stern enough to let them know that you know your rights. I'm telling that to an eight-year-old. Tamir Rice was 12 years old playing with a toy in the park and got killed. And ain't nobody getting in trouble. Please. I hey, don't want to hear listen, hood shit from no nigga that ain't never, have never, even a nigga, academics. I don't want to hear from him. I don't want to hear can't. nothing from him neither. Let's do a challenge. Put academics in the back of the car, take him to a local weed block, and we challenge him to go buy the eighth. <laughs> With a corona mask, not even on no shit. Fitted cap, regular mask, so they just don't know you academics. And I want to see you walk up to the local nigga and get an eighth. And don't kick that. I don't smoke weed. He responded to this fat bitch. I don't smoke weed. Well, you might got to buy eight for the bitch because I know she ain't fuck you because you you. <laughs> built like a dyke. Built like a motherfucking lesbian. He built like a 40-year-old lesbian. He's hey, like a female Manny Fresh. I stand by my sister, nigga, on whatever it is. And it's nothing but love. But hey, church, you have to really get your weather together. I don't feel like this culture is you for you. You need to pay that man. That's all that. I don't feel that. like this culture is for you. And nigga, to keep this shit all the way a band with you, nigga, you should have canceled yourself. Don't wait for the people to cancel you because you know you've been on the sucker shit all along, my nigga. All along. Hey, I, I really respect you when you start to really respect the culture, my nigga, and the skin that you in. And that's the thing. Respect for it. Because, listen, and I hate to bring up the nigga Kelpie, but that's the whole thing. It's disrespectful to come in here with the young boy, I can't remember his name, what he said was right. It's like blackface. It's disrespectful for you to come in here dressed like what you think a P is, especially if you think you sitting with real ones. Who the fuck are you to walk in somebody's establishment or in their home Fake mocking them, dressing like them, and tell them to their teeth, oh, I am this, and you taught me this. Only a white boy would do it. They own the world. This was entertaining. This right here, hey, I feel like uh, I definitely want to see what this pilot of Sharp Tank did. For was sure. this the pilot? This was definitely damn sure a fucking pilot. That's This crazy. was something uh, unique. What you think? You think we should give Vans a shout out? I, Since me and you sitting here, we just did everything. We, we just did the pair of Vans. What you think? No. Oh, but shit, man. we might need to tell Hey, shit, we never know. Well, All we it do takes love is that one. We, we do love, love Vans. These are the platforms. I love platforms. Yeah, man, I got the old 70s joints on. You know, <laughs> see Donnie over there, man. Yeah, everybody, man, shit. I don't know, Vans. Y'all want to come uh, sponsor some shit? <laughs> I guess it's <laughs> what it takes, right? This is where it's at. I don't know, man. This was a good one right here. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you for coming. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do more in the future. Yeah, we're going to make that. We're going to show. We got a show coming out. We got a show coming.
I think I mean, that one. I think that one to be smart. For real. And we don't agree on everything. We don't. We really don't. And but, I see you make me understand a piece of your side the way that you explain it. That's what people I say about me. I think it's all about the explanation of things. Me. You know what I'm saying? So, I uh, I would love to have you again. Like let's just uh, I don't know, let's talk. We put our people together. We'll see what uh we can all come up with. Yeah. You know, I think it'd be cool. Sure. Make it make sense. It'd be a, it'd be the most light skinned podcast out. It probably would be, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Next next time we get together, we're gonna talk about colorism. I think we should. I mm-hmm. like that one. I want to hear from a man's perspective because yeah. y'all get a lot of shit. And we, me and you, gonna bring. Uh, I feel like me and you can bring more topics within current events because I feel like people would love to hear what me and you got to say. For sure. For facts. Don't call me white girl. Please don't. I appreciate you. For coming, for real. I love you, It's Sean. love, baby. Hey, for real. Like I said, we gonna, I'm not even going to say I'm going to bring you back. We're going to talk about some other shit. And then it's crazy because I love when he say this, but he ain't called me this the whole episode. I got love for you, loved one. Yeah. I do. Because you can't call me church, church only for men. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm saying, yeah, I need you to teach me some gonna, of the lingo. I got you. I'm going to teach you a whole bunch of shit. Don't you even worry about it. I was obsessed a little bit, but. You was obsessed. Man, I really, I'm telling you, like, that culture, I don't know why, I just always really, like, I liked it, you know? Oh, yeah. I used to feel like I belonged, like I could have been the one girl. Yeah. You don't know no girls, you don't know no madams, do you? It's never too late, right, baby. <laughs> but it was some real street shit. Have you, you ever seen a where, bitch? Hey, can I say this? What? You know, if there's any respect I could ever give to what you would call as a madam, right? She had to at least be a hoe first. Yeah. She can't yeah. just jump in. And say, hey, yeah, I'm gonna be a man. Yeah, at least be a hoe first. Yeah. So you can understand it when you get do us th- one like this, Lord. <laughs> hey, man. One time for the one time. Hey, and I guess uh, I want shout people to shirt. A bitch made it. I'm gonna West off Coast with shirt. Off the motherfucking shark. wall, because I think this conversation was off the wall, Donnie. For real. How it was, was it, the- Donnie? What you think? No, I'm good. I think so I think, too, man. For real, you know we we always cut them. We are gonna try them out of here, baby. Much love, Sharp. The love Shark one. Tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. Hey, Donnie, shoot us out the motherfucking gym. That was a good joint.